Hello. Hello, welcome again. We're playing this game again because I love it and you can't change my mind or my opinion about it. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologize for the audio quality. Um, there's- I'm moving a lot of stuff in my room. I don't have the best audio quality right now and I probably won't for the next two weeks. So, um, yeah. Oh shit, an ad. Fuck- fuck ads, man. But yes, this is a, this, this is a, this, this is a disclaimer. My audio is shit right now, uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Sorry about it. Anyway, welcome, welcome. Why does it say add starting soon? It's not starting. Start, start, go ahead, start, go ahead, go ahead, start, go ahead, start, go ahead, go start. <laughs> okay, it started. <laughs> oh my god, I'm a little bit cold. Oh. I'm a little bit chilly. I just took a shower. Um, by the way, if the game audio is too loud, too bad. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just let me know. I'll turn it down or whatever. I just really, really like it. It's really pretty for me. Uh, but if the, if the bal audio balancing is weird, you know, let me know. I don't really watch my sh these streams back that much. I should, probably should, but um, I haven't really gotten the time to. So that's that. That is that. So yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. I do believe my sound alert should be working finally. My sound alert's really. <laughs> Should be working, uh, for once. Oh my god, I finally got it to work, um, but... Kinda of dumb, I probably should have done that before, but... <laughs> I really thought it wasn't my fault, but it, it turns out it is my fault, everything's my fault. Anyway, let's, um, let's start! <laughs> so we've already done two routes. We've gone the mermaid route, and we've gone the gravedigger route. And now... Shall we try... Where? The castle? Let's do it. <clears throat> Gotta get my reading voice on. Should I have glasses? Maybe I should have glasses. Okay, no, I won't. Okay, let's start. So, you want to go to the castle? Good idea. All decent fairy tales tend to conclude in castles once they're beluggered. Be beluggered? Be Put upon heroines are finally able to wed the handsome princes they once dream of. You, you, back to you, 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 you. I don't know, you know. Sorry, let me know if the the sounds too loud or too quiet. <laughs> but hi, we got to go. Uh, I, mm, I don't know what's in store for us. What do you mean? Me? What do you mean you? What? You hypocrite, that's what I mean. Alright. <clears throat> Why bother trying your luck with this sh with the shore, which may very well be deserted, or the village, which will be full of dirty, barefooted peasants? She wasn't a dirty, barefooted peasant, she was my life! <laughs> Sound is great, thank you! It is far better to skip the suffering and go straight to the grand finale. That is very astute of you. Um, I didn't- I, I watched all the other, um, but, I mean, I read- I played- I re read- read the other plots, but, um, okay. This sounds like that I'm in for a, um, I'm in for a lot. I'm in for a, a good time, really. Honestly, good time, not a long time, for real, for real. I did not realize you had it in you to be so mercenary. I can only wonder what you will uncover during your moonlight meanderings. The night is far from over, and your adventures are only just beginning. I hope that you- I hope only that you have brushed up on your courtesies. Courtesies, my bad. They may come in handy when one is interacting with a sovereign. Worlds can be temperamental, after all. If you fail to treat them with the pre prerequisite amount of respect, you might come to regret it. I have no respect for royals. They can, they can go to hell for all I care. 
You follow the path which leads to the castle, supporting yourself on weary, aching legs, which feel ready at any moment's notice to detach from your hips. That's me every day. You are little more than a wisp of a girl, but you have been running for so very long and your feet are so very numb. You feel like a great lumbering thing, clumsy and ungainly. The soles of your feet are screaming at you. You need to lie down, and quickly. You only hope, as you continue to run, that you will find a spare room available for you in the castle. You do not know what exactly will await you at the castle, but you have visions, as you run, of a vast, opulent dwelling. This dwelling will surely be full of finely furnished rooms on which you might rest your weary head. I would rather just die with a gay mermaid. Yeah, but you don't know what will happen here. Maybe you'd rather die this way. Dog, can you fuck off? Oh my god, this dog is <laughs> pacing around be uh, behind my door. All the tippy tappies. Oh my god. Rain. There must be- there must also be a queen- what? There must also be a king and queen inside this castle, you ponder, who will be kind and wise. And what if they're children? Don't fuck off the doggy. I have to, it's the only thing that makes them go away. They actually listen to that. <laughs> what of a princess? Ooh, already- <clears throat> already being very gay, I see. Every good castle must possess a princess who will take pity on you and your plight. You can imagine the face of this generous princess with ease, thanks to the fairy tales you read in abundance as a ch small child. The princes will be princess princes princes will be of fair hair and oh the princess. My bad. I can't. Mm, we all know I don't know how to read. What if a prince though? We're lesbians in here. Use your imagination. <laughs> The princess will be fair of hair and blue of eye, with soft pink lips and pursed, uh, per uh, soft pink lips, pursed like rosebuds. Her limbs will be slender, her hands dainty and unsullied from physical labor, and her sensibilities will be sweeter than marzipan. She will be kind to you and compassionate, just like an older sister. But I'm not a lesbian. You are now. Everyone's a lesbian in this stream. In the, when we're playing this game, everyone's a lesbian. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> you do not know what older sisters are like, though. Could it be me? Or younger sisters, for that matter. Could be me. You're only guessing. You're not a complete fool, however, despite your tendency to daydream. And you do have a few reservations. Monarchs do not as you know from voracious reading, have the best track record when it comes to caring for the peasantry. <laughs> I'm lesbifying all of you. Les Lesbianifying. Was there not a very famous queen who once said, with a cavalier, cav cavalier wave of her hand, that the hungry peasants in her kingdom should content themselves with cake if bread was not an option? That's actually a lie that never happened. You think that this might be a more mos mi uh, misquote, but the point still stands. True. The royals are supposed to grant their subjects suc succor in their time of need. This does not always happen. In fact, it very rarely happens. Kings and queens and princesses and princes are just people at the end of the day and they are subject to the same caprices that all humans are. They can also be careless and selfish and inconsiderate. There is no guarantee that this mythical princess of your imagination will help you. A stretch! Alright, fine. Oh, I just knocked my printer a bit. My printer's right next to me. <laughs> it's so stupid. I had to rearrange my room for reasons. And so it's like I'm stuck in a small little cave. I drink water. <laughs> but yes, my desk is in a small little cave now. Kind of. Half cave? Anyway. 
You have your little gremlin cave? I do. Actually, later I'll actually have a real gremlin cave because I'm going to be streaming from a closet. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> For the cake gremlin. Yes. It's a nice closet too. Like it's deep. And it's, it's going to be like a perfect cave, you know? You know what I mean? Anyway. <laughs> Why, there is no guarantee that this mythical princess exists at all. Still, you must try. Closet, why? Because it's better soundproofing. That's why. I also like being in caves, so... It is this hope which keeps you going. You continue to run to the castle. It takes some time before you finally emerge from the woods, but finally you do it. How much time, you ask? I cannot answer that. Did I not say that time has begun to lose all its meaning? The forest is behind you now, at least, and an awful and all the awful nightmares which dwelt within it. It is still cold though, and foggy, and very, very dark. The sun has yet to rise. You can see the moon more clearly now, though, as it hangs above your head, round as pearl round as any pearl or or orb or crystal ball. I always get stuck on this sentence. Always, every time. Your ugly ass would fit there nicely since monster stays in the closet. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. They could join me. Or rather, I would join them. Hmm. I gotta play some monster games. This is kind- Well, no, not really. But, like, I gotta play some actual monster games. <laughs> it doesn't work on me. <laughs> The moonlight shines down upon the castle, which looms in front of you like a cliffside. The, so the stone edifice of the building is imposing, and it drowns you in shadows darker than the depths of the deepest ocean. Ooh, new song. <laughs> the castle is not at all dark, though. Not like the night sky above it. When you crane your head, you can see that there are lights flickering within, in a narrow, slitted windows in the narrow slitted windows. It would appear that somebody is home. The king and queen, perhaps? What of their servants? What, perhaps more presently, uh, pressingly, of their guards? You half expect, as you stand there, that armored knights will accost you for daring to approach the castle of king and qu queen so-and-so. Do you not know your place, foolish peasant girl with a dirty skirt? Be gone with you. You are not, of course, a peasant. Your family is a wealthy one. Or rather, they were, before your father made a series of poor financial decisions. You do not look like a young lady right now, though, with your dirty face and your dirty skirt, which is torn at the hem. If any guards were to take you for a vagrant, it would not be surprising. But, though you stand there dithering, your filthy fingers hooked in front of your filthy skirt, you do not hear any cries. No, nobody sounds the alarm. Lights might be on the inside of the castle, but there is nobody outside of its perimeter standing sentry. There is nobody to impede your entry, and the elaborate iron gates which are set into the vast stone walls above about the castle's exterior are open. Just a crack. Um. <clears throat> Let me take a break from reading for real quick. I know we just started, but god damn, that was a lot. That's a mouthful. Every single sentence. <laughs> Jeez, okay. Whew. It's like every <laughs> every other word. I'm like, what is this? I don't know what this means. Oh, I'm not gonna be looking up every single word every time again. Are they pulling out the big boy words. I know. I don't know these words. Ugh. It would be a trivial matter to slip inside. There is nobody to stop you. Why are you trembling now, you silly thing? You have come so very far. It would be an act of foolishness to turn around now. Go on. Go. You inhale, perhaps in an attempt to screw up your courage, which has, at long last, begun to fail you. And then you step forwards. 
You slide between the wrought iron gates and stealthily, and as secretive as a thief, then cross the path which leads up to the tall, imposing structure. The doomed doorway, blah, the doomed doorway which leads into the castle itself, hewn from stone, is closed. But at a push of your palm, it swings inwards. The door creaks alarmingly as it opens. The, the sound loud enough to split the silence like a thunderclap. You inhale at this and glance around, your eyes darting hither and thither. Hither and thither. Hither, hither and thither. Hither and thither. That's pretty <laughs> funny. If there are any guards post <clears throat> posted about the castle grounds, they should all have been alerted by that sound. Will they come for you at long last? What will happen should they catch you? The art in this game is something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a filter over a picture, but like the actual artwork in it, I'm like... But also, it's just, they do choose the right pictures. <laughs> Will they throw you in the dungeons? That does not sound like a pleasant way to spend a night. At least you would have a roof over your head, though. <clears throat> and you would not have to keep wait walking. Your feet really do ache. You stand there for an in indeterminable amount of time. Your heart pound, pounding and panicked, irregular rhythm at the base of your throat. But, no matter how much time elapses, no guards come. You are thankful for your good luck, though it does make you wonder. Where is everybody? Why? It is almost as if all the people in the world have disappeared. Could you be the very last human left alive? You frown, then press your palm back against the door. You push less cautious cautiously this time, heedless of the loud sound which splits the silence. Splits the silence. Splits the silence. There's no point in worrying about the guards, not when they might very well be non-existent. Your entry to the castle secured, you then take a step forward. The door swings shut behind you, and the resultant slam makes you jump. You do not expect it. Your heart knocks against your ribs, and with wide, wild eyes, you glance about. You are standing in the vast entrance hall, made of stone which splits off into any number of passages. At the very end of the hall, meanwhile, there is a large, elaborate staircase, one which seems to extend to the heavens themselves. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> did it? Did you hear it? Did it actually work this time? <laughs> oh, I think it's behind. It's behind the game. That's why it didn't show up. It worked! Yay! <laughs> uh. Because it's behind the game capture right now, but that's okay. This is the only game really I'll be playing in front of everything, so it should be fine. Uh, it is dark inside the hall, but there are numerous torches set in sco sconces in the stone wall, which are aflame. They offer some relief from the shadows. You can hear the faint sound of the wind outdoors as it moans against the castle's impervious walls. But you cannot hear any footsteps. You cannot hear any voices. You cannot, more importantly, hear any people. Maybe the castle is empty. If that is the case, though, then who lit these torches? A ghost? <laughs> it is a curious conundrum. You muster up what remains of your courage, then cry out, addressing the empty hall in timorous... Timorous? Timber's voice, which fails to properly fill up the space. I wish the wood monster me. <laughs> um, I don't think it. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, you say, your eyes wide. Is anybody there? Your voice echoes through the vast empty hall, but it is met yet again with silence. You cannot say you are stu too surprised, but it is somewhat disappointing. Not one to be deterred, you try again, and again, your voice growing louder with each subsequent attempt. 
No matter how loud your voice, however, it fails to reach any ears. If anybody is here, they do not seem to be particularly sociable. That, or perhaps they simply cannot hear you. Go to the room where that was lit up. Exactly. Could they be in another room? Blech. Yes, that must be it. You will never find that pretty fairy tale princess of your imagination if you stand idle, you know. It is time to get to work. Put those legs of yours to good use. I can put them to good use. <clears throat> Not knowing what else to do, is there anything else you can do? You begin to explore. You examine the rooms first on the ground floor of the castle, which are of a similar scale, to the impressive entrance hall, largely and richly furnished, but utterly unoccupied. After some time of aimless meandering, encountering nobody save the ghosts of the aeons past memorialized on portraits upon the walls, you muster the courage to ascend to the second floor. <clears throat> This woman is like, maybe there's somebody who can help me, or a pretty princess I can set. <laughs> I- I'm not- mm. Yeah. I mean, maybe she's not, but well, I might be. <clears throat> it's just- She just wants to live out her fantasies, and if those fantasies happen to be a different kind of fantasies, then, you know, fantasies are fantasies. <laughs> This floor, too, you examine, wandering through a seamlessly endless series of hallways, until, at long last, you find a door which is ajar. From between a crack- <clears throat> From between the crack in the door and the jam, you can see flickering lights. Irregular, yes, but it is light nonetheless. Could it be from a fireplace? That would suggest, then, that this room is occupied, unlike all of the others. Perhaps the kindly princess you dreamed of will be awaiting you in this room. Maybe? <clears throat> it is with a trembling hand that you press your palm against the door. Press your palm. You push it. No one here? You step inside the bedchamber which unveils itself to you. Shyly, you stand in the threshold of the chamber. Much of your encouragement, much of your courage extinguished. And gasp. The bedroom itself is gorgeous. It is a chamber so luxuriant, not even the shadows can obscure the fine craft of the furniture within it, nor the rich patterns on the walls. It is the girl inhabiting the chamber, however, who truly takes your breath away. Wow! <clears throat> Alright, I don't know what voice to give her. Sitting upon the velveteen she- Ugh! Sorry, I hate velvet. Velveteen sheets of the towering four-poster is a girl in a sumptuous red gown who seems to be of a like age to you. A wolf. <laughs> yeah, a wolf. You do not have a clear view of the girl's face. Her head is bowed, her gaze directed downwards at her lap. You can tell from her hair, however, and from her slender calves which protrude from beneath the hem of her dress, that she is very pretty. Oh, she's just pretty pretty. The girl's hair is golden, just like freshly cut wheat, but it is the red of her dress which truly captures your attention. She is so striking you cannot look away from her. Oh god, what the fuck? I did not like that. <laughs> oh god, okay. The <laughs> Jump scare. The girl is not alone in her chamber yeah, either. She has a companion, though. This companion is not half so endearing as she. Fuck dolls. Yeah. <laughs> in her lap, perched upon her velvet skirt, is a doll. The doll's hair, like that of her mistress's, is golden, though much of it is hidden beneath the bonnet. The girl is adjusting the china teacup held in the, in, a, in the doll's tiny hand while the rim of the cup glints in the light which exudes from the fireplace. If the girl is of a similar age as you, it seems strange that she would content herself by playing with dolls. Man, we're through, we, already know, we already know that they're all very, very lonely. And if she has enough money for it, 
Why not? Is she not too old for it? This girl would be more at home, you decide, at a ball, wearing an extravagant gown, speaking with wealthy noblemen, perhaps even princes. She should not be sitting in what you presume is her bedchamber, adjusting a teacup in a doll's hand. <clears throat> but you are not afforded much more time to stand there marveling at the girl, because she turns. She raises her head. Then her eyes meet yours. You thought the girl pretty when you first observed her, sitting on the edge of her plush velveteen bed, examining her doll. Now she is looking at you, however, her face illuminated by the flame in their, in their grate. You can see that you are mistaken. She is not just pretty. She is beautiful. So much so it is breathtaking. She looks as though she had stepped out of the page of a picture book. She is simply too perfect to belong to this world. It's the mermaid all over again. Perhaps she is some kind of vision, a, walk, a waking dream, a hallucination. It's almost as if the game is called it so it gets so lonely here. Yeah, it's almost like that. That's crazy. That would be that would be such a coincidence if it was. <laughs> <clears throat> but no, she is none of those things. She's really cute. Sorry, I picked the mic. The doll in her lap is cold, is a cold hard thing made of porcelain, and it is unflinchingly, re reassuringly real. Ew. Are we gonna get killed again? I hope so. Is she gonna fuck you and turn you into a doll? <clears throat> uh, let's just move on. <coughs> uh, <laughs> Uh. If she were a mirage, surely she would not be able to handle physical objects such as this. It is strange, though. The doll, though immaculately made, looks oddly imperfect when compared to the girl who is holding it. She is sto so startlingly beautiful, she even puts man-made representations of feminine charms to shame. Yeah, because they're man-made. Because personally, I don't mind being her toy wiggly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> the sight of her makes you feel rather weak. You always had been have had a fondness for fair maidens, haven't you? Oh boy. Oh boy, have I. You are rather hopeless when it comes to them. Even worse than a knight errant from a courtly legend. Your aesthetic appreciation is not particularly ladylike, but, well, it is not every day a girl encounters an elegant beauty like this, attired in red, illuminated by the firelight. I suppose I can forgive you for this rudeness, as too can the girl. She does not seem the, to be the type to hold a grudge. Hang on now. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh! The girl says in a voice that, surprisingly enough, far less that is in a voice that, surprisingly enough, is far less refined than her appearance. It's good to see you. I've been waiting. Has she? Turn your character like laid on her. Why has she been waiting? That is news to you. You blink, perplexed, a response on the tip of your tongue, but you are unable to expel it into the ether. The girl is setting her doll aside. Then she stands, the hem of her dress swishing about her legs. Nimbly like a ballerina, she canvasses the space between you. Her room is so very large, there is quite a lot of space. Then takes your hands in her own. Okay, not suspicious at all. You must, the girl says, her eyes aglow with excitement. Be my new lady's maid? It's been a while. It's... Uh, what? It's been a while, but it's such a relief that you finally arrived. I knew that you would. You never leave me alone. Not when you knew how long I was waiting. Oh, I'm so happy. You'd never leave me alone. Okay, okay now. Who the... Okay. Mm. 
<clears throat> the girl's mood is contagious, so much so you find yourself being swept away in it. You're tempted to accept any identity she might press upon you. That's fair, that's fair, I would. You have never been a maid before, but you might not mind being this girl's maid. I would not mind <laughs> being a male wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me just order the maid dress real quick. <laughs> we'll get on to that. She does not seem like a poor mistress to serve. Not if she is always this kind. You cannot mask the confusion, however, which flickers across your face. She looks like a sadist, that's all I'm gonna say. You are not good enough- you are not a good enough actress. And in any case, this is all happening too quickly. Why, you barely know the girl. Why is she being so very familiar? It is with blank- it is with blank bovine eye, bovine, bovine eyes that you examine the girl. Your befuddlement is pronounced enough that even the girl, despite her good mood, notices it. I must say it is too, just without the ist. <laughs> say it is without the ist. <laughs> she frowns. I frowned too. <laughs> then she says, her fingers sliding away from your own. Or am I mistaken? Are you not the my new lady's maid after all? The disappointment in the girl's face is abundant, so much so your heart clenches. You do not know her, she is still a stranger, but you are struck all of a sudden with an intense desire to appease her. You do not want to let her down. The thought is devastating. You are not aware, you tell her, that you had applied to be her maid, but if that is what she wills, you would not be opposed to it. You pray that she forgives you, though, for your discombobulation. You come from a distant country, and you have traveled for many miles. You know not where you are, and you do not know who she is. But may I just say... I... Sorry, uh... <clears throat> what? You don't know who I am? It is regrettable, you tell her. But no, you do not know her, though that is no fault of her own. Why, you have spent such a long time running, you hardly even know yourself. Your character just said, I'm no maid, but for you I will. <laughs> We're one and the same. Uh, so you are a fugitive then, from another country. I see. I won't pry into your past then, if you'd rather forget about it. I don't mind sharing my past with you, though. Everybody in this country knows who I am, after all. Or, at least they should. Now this is quite the impressive boast. If it were to come from the lips of another, you would find it unpleasantly arrogant. You do not think, however, that this girl is trying to show off. You get the feeling, instead, that she is merely telling the truth. If you don't have the pleasures of knowing me, then allow me to do the honors. My father and my mother were the king and queen of this realm, and I am its princess. I've lived in this castle all my life, so I don't know much about the outside world, but I know that other countries do exist out there. <laughs> Good for you! <laughs> Gosh, she's so stupid. I love her. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she doesn't mind sharing the past. Can we share the future? Wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> oh, she's so stupid. God, what am I gonna do? <clears throat> I presume it is from one of those foreign realms that you come from. It is very good to meet you. I've always wanted to talk to somebody from overseas. It feels like quite the opportunity. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh god. The girl giggles at this and you smile in response. You tell her, oh shit, wait. Sorry, I forgot to take my B12. I literally ate just- I ate something just- 
to take my B12 and I forgot to take it. <laughs> That's my, why my leg feels weird. Alright, moving on. <clears throat> you tell her unthinkingly that it is your pleasure, really, to meet her. Or at least you mean to. You only get halfway through this remark when the full gravity of what the girl has told you sinks in. You come to a stop. Then... You stare. Did she just say she was a princess? Yes, that's right. I'm a princess, and one day I'll be queen. After I've done a bit- oh my god. After I've done just a little bit of growing up. Don't take the meds off on this <laughs> Fuck off. So the dream. My minister- ministers? Ministers? My ministers don't think I'm ready to run the country just yet. But I've been doing my best at my lessons. One day, I'm sure I'll be the best queen there ever was. So she really is a princess. That makes sense, you suppose, given she lives in a castle. But it comes as a surprise regardless. You hadn't known before you entered this chamber that you were trespassing on a lady of such great renown. Why, if she willed it, she could have you executed for your carelessness. I don't think she has anybody to execute me except for herself. I mean, I wouldn't buy that, though. <laughs> An ugly red flush creeps upon your face. A flush which is far more lewd, 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 lurid than the princess's dress as you look to your feet. Bashfully, you stammer out a new address that you are very sorry for intruding upon her, and you hope that she can forgive you. Oh, it's all right. Think nothing of it. I don't mind, really. We all make mistakes. And anyway, you weren't to know. You said you weren't from around here. You nod your head in a silent affirmation. It isn't a complete lie. You really are not from this country. You are not from this world at all. How wonderful. I'll look forward to picking your brain later. Literally? All of my servants come from the nearby village. Their tales are all the same, and so are their superstitions. You mean the village where that got the plague? That nobody is alive in now? Hmm? What if all of these girls come together to gang up on me? I mean, to... to... kill me. <coughs> I could do with the breath. Ah, uh, I could do with the breath of fresh air. My last lady's maid told me I was too impetuous. But I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to be wanting a bit of adventure. Like literally picking my brain, not gonna lie, I don't like when people poke around there. <laughs> yeah, probably be a little uncomfortable. Not that I've ever been afforded much of that. I've been a shut up in here for so long. I hardly ever get the chance to talk to other girls my age. My last lady's maid was older than me, and and so was the one before her, and the one before her. Some of the princess's fair mood seems to dissipate as she speaks, her expression turning by degrees into something rather more pensive. But I haven't seen of many, any. Oh my god, I, I don't. I can't read her lines. <clears throat> Alright. But I haven't seen any of my old lady's maids in a while, or any of the other servants for that matter. No shit. They've all disappeared. Now that is quite curious. Hooray! <laughs> now that is quite curious. How could a whole household, whole household full of servants simply disappear? That, that, I don't know. This castle was full of servants once. My lady's maids. And my undermaids, and my scullery maids, and my housekeeper, and my cooks, and a large retinue of retainers. <laughs> They're all gone now, though. I think my ministers must have sent them away. I don't know why they would have done that, though. They didn't explain it to me. <laughs> Hi, Karimiko. Hello. I'll stretch and hydrate. But I'm gonna have to pee real quick. If y'all keep hydrating me. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> they didn't explain it to me. But then again, they never explain anything to me. They still treat me like a little girl. It is so tiring. She said that her minister sent her servants away. What of her parents, the king and queen? Would they not be the ultimate authorities in the castle's hierarchy? Yeah, something's definitely going on here. They would, yes, if they were still alive. There we go. But they're not. They died a long time ago. I was raised for most of my life by the servants. Well then, how important are you, really? Oh, you answer. And then you flush. You hadn't known. It's alright. You don't need to apologize. I'm just happy that I have you now. Oh no. I was getting sick and tired of only having my dolls to speak to. They aren't the best conversational partners. You can imagine so, yes. You doubt any doll, even one made by a talented artisan. Yeah. With an intelligent face indistinguishable from a human's would be very good at answering back. Oh no, they aren't. They're hopeless at it, really. They're so stony-lipped. You have no idea how much of a relief it is to see you. This castle is so big, and without my servants, it feels so very empty. It gets so lonely here. Name drop. Okay. <laughs> now this is an interesting turn of phrase. Have you heard this? Did it catch out of your head like a burr? Have you heard it before? <laughs> I have, indeed, I have. You do not have much time to ponder this, however, because the princess is speaking anew in that curiously conversational manner of hers, which does not seem particularly princessy. Maybe she learned how to speak from her servants. That would explain why her consonants are so unrefined. Who cares? I think she's gay. <gasps> the spookiest of them all. The gays. Oh, but listen to me, yammering on again. It's a bad habit. I really must put a stop to it. You're probably tired, dear one, from your travels. Would you like me to show you, me show you to your room? I have my own room? Yes, the princess announces before you can say anything in reply. I think I'll do just that. Spookier since it's Pride Month too? <gasps> Double spook. Actually, I think Pride, Pride Month adds on like four spooks. So like, wait, no, no, no. I, can't, I don't know what the word for five times is. Three spooks, so quadruple spooky. Oh, no. Uh, pen, pen, troop, pen, tuple? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. <clears throat> I might show you a bit around the castle first, though. It's like a maze in here. I wouldn't want you getting lost. You'll be staying here for quite some time, after all. The princess then hastens to take you on a tour of her home. Fortunately, she does not show all of the rooms in her abode, and neither does she offer overly long descriptions as to what the few rooms she does have does show you are used for. Five times spooky, let's go. <laughs> she does, however, pause by the kitchens, where she offers you some victuals. Once the growling in your belly has satisfied, the princess then resumes her journey. She leads you down a dark, twisting out hallway, and up a series of equally dark, twisting steps until she arrives, at long last, before a door. The princess pushes this door aside summarily, thus permitting you entrance to the small, humble bedchamber. The chamber is not half so opulent as the grand bedroom in which the princess resides, with its re resplen res resplendent four-poster and its richly patterned wallpaper. Please don't have velvet. This room ceiling is not as high, and the singular bed shoved against the wall is thin and narrow. That's fine. The walls are unassuming beige, uh, are an unassuming beige, and the floor beneath their soles is of warped wood. There is a malodorous scent, too, which hangs in the air. One of disuse and general decay. It's mold. It's mold. Just say what it is. It's mold. You get the feeling that nobody has slept in this room for quite some time. Seems to be a very colorful place. <laughs> Palace. Yes, yes it does. Very interesting. That might explain why it feels so very cold in here. 
Though, if the princess's tour of her castle has taught you anything, it is that it is cold in every room in her abode. Is she a zombie? Is she a zombie? Now, here we are, the final stop of our tour. This will be your room, dear one. I hope it's to your liking. The princess, despite her exalted status, looks somewhat uneasy as she observes you, her eyes upturned like those of a loyal dog's. Get! Is she concerned about your reaction to this room? No, no, no. I wouldn't care. Perhaps she is afraid that you will turn up your nose, turn your nose up at her kindness. For a princess, she is awfully eager to please. He eats to the poppy. This is unexpected. Con this unexpected contrast between the princess's lofty title and her ingratitude, ingratia, in ingratiating attitude makes you smile. The room is rather scanty, yes, when it comes to its contents, but it is more than passable. <clears throat> it has a roof and four walls, and though it is cold, you fancy you will feel warmer once you have slipped beneath the bed sheets. The room is not quite so fancy as your dormitory at the conservatory, and neither is it so large, but it does have one glaring improvement over your previous lodgings. You will not be expected to share it with anybody else. <laughs> there are no sharing rooms. Woohoo, let's go. There is only one bed in this room, and this bed is to belong to you. You think that the peace and the quiet will do you a world of good. You have no idea how much difference it makes. You tell the princess as much, and she smiles. No sharing, no roommates. Fuck roommates. Not literally, but like... Oh god, I can't stand roommates. <laughs> That's good. I was worried you wouldn't like it. <laughs> I know it isn't much to look at, but it's one of the nicest servants' rooms we have in this castle. Most of the maids sleep beneath the roof in this tiny, tiny room which is all cramped. There's ten beds up there and they're so close together, there's barely any room to pass between them. Ugh. I thought it was perfectly ghastly when I saw it the last time I went up there. Not that I was supposed to be up there. It was a rainy day, and I couldn't go outdoors, so I was doing a bit of exploring. If the housekeeper had known I'd been skulking around, skulking around, I don't think she would have been, be be would have been best pleased. Well, in any case, nobody sleeps up there anymore. The scullery maids are all gone now. What does that even mean? I could have put you up there, though, in the attic with all those empty beds. I didn't think it'd be very cheery. You're not just a scullery maid, you're my lady's maid. That means you deserve good lodgings. It'd be an insult to offer you anything less than this. Now, it's getting late. I'll have you forgive me for ra rabbiting on. I've heard it's something I tend to do. It's a bad habit, one that's unbecoming for a lady. The housekeepers warned me enough times. Where are the housekeepers? You reassure the princess to the contrary, smiling as you do so. You do not mind if she talks so much. That is better than not talking at all. Her affable nature makes it easier to spend time with her. Manners be damned. You were always scolded too back in the conservatory for your behavior. You know full well how aggravated it can, how aggravating it can be to, to be unbraided. Upbraided, upbraided? Not for any particularly particular misdemeanor, but for being yourself. Yeah, fuck that. Well, I'm glad you understand, the princess answers with a giggle. I really should be off, though. It's bad manners to keep you, especially when you look so sleepy. Get some rest. We can talk more tomorrow if you don't mind my ceaseless prattle. I'm glad you seem to appreciate it, at least. Though, I'm sure you'll get tired of it eventually. All of my old maids did. <laughs> uh, interesting. The princess departs, and in her absence, you take a seat upon the bed. Your new bed. You cannot help but think that this is all happening very quickly. It does not seem like very long ago that you were still in the forest, running for your life amongst the tall, imposing trees with their gnarled, Grasping branches. Damn, I wish it was me. <laughs> the forest might as well be a distant memory now, though. You are indoors, inside a castle, no less. 
and you have been given a room in which to sleep and clothes you might wear. It seems premature, still, to declare that you are out of the woods, in a metaphorical sense, I mean, but things could certainly be worse. You force yourself to stand, on legs which feel too weary to support yourself, and change into the night clothes hanging in the wardrobe. <clears throat> The night clothes do not fit you perfectly, but you are too tired to care about that. You are too tired to care about much any anything. You retreat to the bed and slide beneath its sheets. Then you let your eyelids fall shut. You exhale, and lulled by the breeze which blows in outdoors, you fall asleep. Something, something is gonna get fucked here. Either literally or in a bad way. <laughs> yeah, and I'm all for it. Um, I'm gonna have to. I need to go to the bathroom real quick. So I'll be. I'll just. I'll just be right back, uh, real quick. Uh, yeah. And then we we'll can. And then we'll. And then we'll listen to her dream because it's different every time. <laughs> all right. I'll be right back. Three, two, one, go. back let's continue let's see what we dream about this time you're so very tired your sleep in a dark is a dark dark one darker even than the furthest abysses of the night time like the night time sky however which shimmers with stars your sleep is not devoid of those prismatic fragments you call you humans call dreams Though, in this case, I rather think your nocturnal Im imaginings are worth rather more than that. They are not dreams. They are, are they, to which your slumbering mind is subjected. You know that they are not. Otherwise, your body would not be so very cold, not so clammy. The images that flicker beneath your closed eyelids, like the ghostly images in a... F oh my god. I never thought I'd have to say this word. Fenaskit, fena, 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 kits, fena, kits, oh my god, fenakistoscope, 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 I've really never, th I, I've seen this word and I heard it, but I never thought I'd have to say it myself, oh my god, like the ghostly images in a fenakistoscope were not conjured from within your mind, can you read that word? <laughs> I can't. They were, instead, taken from your memories. You are not merely dreaming. You are remembering. It's finally clear now. You remember the girls who slept in your dormitory, and how they always hastened to use the shower first, so you were the last for breakfast. You remember, however, when you finally did arrive at the dining hall, the most desirable morsels had already been snaffled up by the girls who got there earlier. Why don't you go eat first and then- Okay, anyway. 
You struggle too to find a seat once you finally did get your hands on some food because nobody ever wanted to sit with you. The other girls act, all acted like you were a leper, oh my god, save for when they went, wanted favors. They never asked for any favors, mind, for why would they? To them, your father's prestige did not matter. They were all wealthy ladies too, many of them wealthier than you. When everybody has the airs and graces of a princess, how is anybody supposed to stand out? You stood out the least in your class, perhaps because you were one of the smallest, the frailest, the sickliest, who always came down with colds in the winter. That's not fair. That's literally ableist. <laughs> Just able to know. Your poor health did not stop the girls from treating you as a servant, though. When they remembered that you existed, of course. It was your lot in life, as you dwelt within the stone walls of a conservator, to carry school bags across the field like a pack mule. That's really fucked. Like, you used the weakest one? Are you serious? God, I hate people. Ugh, it's too real. <clears throat> Then, come evenings, the girls in your dormitory had you sewing on missing buttons and ironing out the creases and wrinkles in their uniform. Damn, Abel, is my lesbian game? Yeah, I know. I can't believe it. <laughs> if there was an odd job that needed performing, you would always be asked. But this girl did not ask you. That would have been too civilized. They ordered you instead. And as they ordered you, they laughed at you. They laughed, and they laughed, and they laughed. The laughter hurt, but it hurt considerably less than the kicks did, and the slaps and the pinches. Once during an embroidery lesson, one of her classmates had an accident with her sewing scissors. Um, okay. Um. Hmm. Look away if you don't- I don't know. I mean, this game is all sort of- sorts of fucked up, but like... Uh, if you have this specific trigger that I might have- <laughs> Oh god. Oh, well, let's see. Let's see. Oh god, of course it is. Of course it is. I don't like this. This is something I really, really don't like. <laughs> it, it's not as bad as- the worst can be, but oh, my hand hurts. <laughs> she stumbled, or at least she pretended to, and before you knew it, the silvery blades of those scissors were embedded in your left palm. Nah. I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> this happened quite some time ago when you were even littler than you are now, but you can still remember it. It hurt a lot. Yeah, I'll fucking bet. The scissors were sharp, and they perf perforated your skin, not all the way down to the bone, but enough to bleed. Ugh. Just speed ran skip really close for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your wound bled bright red like strawberry jam all over your embroidery. That's pretty. Sorry, no, it's not pretty. It's just, it's awful. Wait. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why'd you write it so pretty if it's not supposed to be pretty? Then, when your professor saw it, she shrieked. Her face turned as pale as when they looked as way, and she looked and she looked for a few moments, as though she might faint, though you the you were the one who was in pain. Yeah, I mean it's awful. Your professor looked at your face. She could not bear to look at your hand, then demanded to know why you could not be more careful. We love victim blaming! Yeah! Woohoo! Good bitch. Her tone had been an accusatory one, almost as if you had stabbed yourself in the hand with your scissors to goad her. <laughs> Good bitch. It's fucking bitch. Oh, I hate this bitch. The pain in your hand hurt, but the giggles of your per persecutors hurt all the more. 
They never were punished for that. Of course they weren't. They never are. They never are. Perhaps your professor did not care enough to punish them. Perhaps she, like everybody else, thought it was all your fault. You sure you're okay? It's like mildly triggering to me. <laughs> Bringing up <clears throat> past memories. I just get mad about it, don't worry. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. We're over. We're not in that situation now. The wound, when all was said and done, was not too deep. You did not even need any stitches. It heal That's nice. That's really, really nice. I mean, stitches are awful. It healed well in time on its own, though. It still left a scar. A white raised thing like a crescent moon. I- okay, I- <laughs> I still have that scar. I've always wanted scars. Not necessarily like to ha get scars, but like to have scars. Like I've always wanted scars. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Just like, oh cool, a scar. I guess that's why I have tattoos now. Kinda makes up for it. But yeah, I've never seriously been injured, like seriously, seriously. Like had to have stitches or had to have Stitches or cast or anything, so <laughs> yeah. It's uh, I I guess my bones are just. Oh, thank you. I guess my bones are just um flexible, a little wiggly. I'm just a little wiggly boy. <laughs> you do not know how much blood you lost. Ooh, it seems like a lot. Back in the ca classroom, you could smell it in the air. Sharp as iron. But it could not have been that much, evidently. Your hands! That's where a lot of blood flow is. Weak jeans? How- I think I just have really good re re reflexes. If your wound has been more serious, perhaps your professor might have cared. Probably not. Honestly, it probably would have still been- Oh my god, actually- Oh, wait, but this th way of thinking is so... <laughs> so real. Maybe if I got hurt more, then they would have believed me. Oh my god. Perhaps your classmates too would have felt some mo modicum of guilt over what they did. Too real. <laughs> This seems very unlikely. This is definitely something for real. You know that your blood meant nothing to your classmates. Why should it? If you meant next to nothing, then the blood in your veins was, if such a thing possible, even more inconsequential. You feel disoriented when you wake up at long last with the rising of the sun. You do not remember what you dreamt, but... You do not think that your dreams were very- were of a particularly pleasant nature. <clears throat> if they were, your heart would not be hammering so. All at ease. Ill- ill at ease. Oh my god, no! Fuck no! Wait! <laughs> uh, oh no! <laughs> <clears throat> If I kiss them, then they'll understand my pain. Anime taught me that. <laughs> no! I can't go around kissing your enemies. Oh my god. Only I can. Okay, I thought for a second I had hiccups. I don't think I do. I think we're okay, but it might pop up. <laughs> it might pop up. Ill at ease, you glance around. You're lying in a narrow bed in an unremarkable room, well, one with dull beige walls and a warped wooden floor. It's not that unremarkable, it's better than before, wasn't it? Where exactly are you? This does not look like your dormitory at the conservatory, not unless it has shrunk threefold overnight. Your brow furrows as you attempt to recall the events of the night prior, until, with a gasp, it all clicks, clicks into place. You remember now. You are running through the woods, trying to escape from... You shudder. You do not want to think of what it was you were trying to escape from. What was it? Tell me! 
You presume that you might must have given your hunter the slip, though, because you are still in one piece, awake and alert enough to face the dawning of a new morning. You still have all of your limbs and your facial features appear to be in the correct configuration. That is more than enough to be getting along with. You look at the foot of your bed, then blink, bemused at your discovery. You can see, lying upon the sheets, a garment, two garments actually, of black and white folded into a neat white square. Huh. Oh! Oh! Turns out I don't need to order it. <clears throat> what could that be? A maid's outfit. If so, it would not be too surprising. You can now recall your visit with the princess the night prior and her assertions that you must be her lady's maid. Her lady's maid. Well, if that is the role she wants you to assume, you have no qualms about it. It is, fair, it is far preferable to the other role you played last night, that of a startled quarry running from its pursuer. I would love to see you in the main outfit, wink wink. Well, I mean, I've already made... <laughs> I've already made it. <laughs> made it. <laughs> like, made it. Made it. <laughs> Wait, no. That also sounds kind of weird. Uh, made... A drawing... Of... It. Yes. No, I mean, if you scroll way back... <laughs> Let's just let's just let's just get on with it. It's far preferable than the other one. You press your fingers against the humble maid's attire. It feels surprisingly soft to the touch, not coarse like you expected. Scroll it. <laughs> These clothes are rather fine. Did the princess put them there? If so, that is all the more reason to wear them. You know, I'll just like re retweet it. Maybe, maybe I'll retweet it. But she put. She gave. A Okay, so you were sleeping, and then she came in and put clothes there. That's so sweet. You're not churlish enough to deny her hospitality. You rise from your new bed, then undress yourself, unbuttoning the front of your plain white nightgown to set it set and setting it aside. This task accomplished, you then clad yourself in your new attire, black, white, and em eminently sensible. What a creature princess. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> She's really cute though. You feel very far away from this, from the girl that you once were. Your face might be the same as always, but something within you seems to have changed. You are no longer a student, not as long as you mean to reside within the princess's castle. You would far rather be her servant. I would rather be a servant than a, than a student. Actually, what's the difference? Okay, anyway. <laughs> Assured of your newfound identity, you retreat from your chamber, then make your way to your mistress's bedroom. The castle is a large one with many, many rooms and many, many hallways to connect them, and for a brief while you find yourself horrendously lost. You cannot remember where the princess's bedroom is. You are beginning to feel rather disoriented when... To your relief, your eyes snag upon a stairwell, which looks rather familiar. Could this be the way? You ascend the steps, your foot falls cushioned by the plush carpet which lines them. Mm. Then find your way down the very same hall you traversed the night prior. You all ever get super stressed when, when like, going down carpet-covered stairs? Because I feel like I'm gonna slip every time. It stresses me out so much. But to be fair, if you do slip, it's not gonna hurt that much though also always always want to like go up them creature style like on all, all fours just <laughs> always you gotta you gotta it's carpet covered what's the worst thing it's you gotta slip but also like what if if you're in a castle and it's carpet covered too tall to run all fours. Not when you go up the stairs. No one's too tall for that. <laughs> you gotta go. <laughs> oh my god. I remember there was this hotel that I went to. Well, that my family used to go to for 
not even hotel reasons, but we go there and then there's stairs and there's the carpet up the stairs and I so, so badly. This isn't like the fucking old entrance, right? It's so badly just want to <laughs> gremlin, gremlin climb the stairs. Ugh. Why can't I? Why can't everyone agree that we have to do that to carpeted stairs? Hmm? Why not? Ugh. If your memory does not fail you, then the princess's bedroom ought to be... Yes, it is here. You rap upon the door, but receive nothing in the way of a response. Is the princess still a, a bed? You wonder briefly whether you oughtn't wait until she has risen of her own accord. But no. The sun is high in the sky and it would be a shame to let the princess sleep through the day. Yeah, didn't she put the outfit on your bed? She would be awake. You ought instead to rouse her. That seems like the sort of duty a lady's maid should attend to. She's not there. You enter the princess's bedroom and glance about. Her room looks much the same as you remember it from the night prior, though the ceiling seem to ha seems even higher than when viewed in the one morning's light. You can see now that there are fewer shadows to impede your view. Uh, you can see now that you can see now that there are fewer shadows to impede your view. How very opul opulent, yes, opulent, your young mistress's abode is. Her um, armoire, armoire, is large and imposing, as is the grate in which you will be expected to keep a fire lit during the nights. The princess herself, meanwhile, is curled in her side beneath the sheets, looking rather less grandiose, grandiose. Than her title would suggest. She is attired in a nightgown adorned with frills, and her hair is split across her pillow like spilled gold. <coughs> in her slender arms, meanwhile, held to her chest is the doll, a very the very same one she was cosseting, 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 cosseting last night. You suppose this doll must be her favorite? Idly, you wonder what the doll's name is. Though, you do not suppose it matters all that much. It is time to wake your mistress. You call out to the princess, but she is largely unresponsive. Her eyelashes are still soon tightly shut, and her lips pursed in slumber. You purse your lips too, and sigh. Well, nobody said ever said your job would be easy. Once again you call to the princess, and this time she replies. Her response is not a favorable one, however. Mm. She sighs and turns away from you, her doll clenched, clutched to her chest. Just give me a little longer. The princess sounds so enfeebled, en en enfeebled, but you do not take pity on her. No. If you have learned anything from the conservator, save for knowledge pertaining to the respiratory 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 tracts of fish, is it is that one must be cruel to be kind. Kind of. You can be kind in a you can be you can be cruel in a kind way though. You do not think this adage was practiced with any great success in the conservatoire, but perhaps it will but perhaps it will have more of an impact on the princess. I mean, why not just be kind to be kind? Eh. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta. You tell her once again to wake up more sternly this time. You will not let her sleep, for she has slept long enough already. Has she? You don't know when she went to sleep. <laughs> oh, it's so kind! <laughs> it is very slovenly, really, to still be abed at such an hour. Hang on now! Hang on a second. You don't know how much she slept last night. What if she only had like two hours of sleep and you're waking her up during deep sleep and this- oh. We don't know. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh. Defeated, the princess sighs. Oh, Alright. I can see that I can't twist you around my little finger. 
Hmm, maybe not now, but maybe later. Ah, she's so cute! <laughs> I'm up, I'm up. You don't need to nag me. <laughs> she's so fucking cute. <laughs> oh, God. Once you have roused the princess from her bed and you have put her doll to one side, you set upon her toilet. You aid the princess in the brushing of her hair, a chore to which she submits willingly, like a cat might allow its fur to be brushed. <laughs> you allow yourself to ponder as you run the bristles of the princess's brush hair, uh, brushed through her hair. How wonderfully soft it feels against your skin. But a curious query from the princess. Are you alright, dear one? Brings you back to your senses. You're rather lost in thought there. Look lively now. You wouldn't want the princess to catch wind of your salacious thoughts, would you? Salacious. I thought that you had learned your lesson about that already. What does that pertain to? Suitably chast chast chastened, okay. <clears throat> Suitably chastened, you finish with the princess's hair and then set the brush aside. Now that the princess's tresses have been taken care of, you must start in her attire. The princess remains seated upon the edge of her bed, looking up at you as askance. Asca That's how you spell askance? That is how you spell askance? Oh, I never knew that. I've heard that word a lot, but I never knew that's how you spell it. She does not ask you to avert your eyes, and nor does she make any motion of divi- divi- di di what? Divesting herself of her nightgown. Never ever heard of that word. Uh, askance. Honestly, I don't know the real meaning of it. Askance, with an attitude or look of suspicion or disapproval. Yeah. <clears throat> it really does seem as though she expects you to undertake this task on your own. <laughs> Is that alright? You ask the princess as much. She's so happy about it. You are not wish to impinge upon her modesty, but she only laughs. <laughs> yes, that's alright. It's what you're supposed to do. Uh, it's what you're supposed to do if you're my lady's maid. It, I'm used to being dressed and undressed. I'm not a bit squeamish. I'm not a bit squeamish about it. She might not be squeamish about it, but you are. You have never seen a naked woman before, expect excepting yourself. I mean, she may not have, but I have. <laughs> anyway, um. Even then, however, you have always dressed and undressed furtively, not wanting to examine your body for longer than is strictly necessary. Oh. <laughs> so true. The mermaid was technically naked? No, she wasn't. Was she? She's, she has shells. She has shells on her boobs. But I guess waist down she was. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> yeah, bottom up. <clears throat> what are we doing? Yes, strictly than necessary. You have never much liked the way that you look. You make a few more mumbled objections, but the princess sweeps them to one side easily. It's alright. I might be a princess, but we're both people underneath all of our clothes. I doubt we look much different. You are not sure about that. You have not yet seen the princess unadorned, but you already know, to look at her face, that you are different. She is much, much prettier than you are. But she is waiting, and you do not wish to keep her any longer. You steady your nerves. Then, you reach out with trembling hands, and you begin to undo the buttons which run down the front of the princess's nightgown. You work as quickly as you are able, which, given how badly your hands are shaking, is not very. 
You fumble with a couple of the buttons, flinching as you do so. The princess, however, seems blissfully unaware at what is, what it is exactly you are doing. Or not doing, for your fingers have begun to seize up, with the front of her nightgown. She's not even looking at you. Instead, her gaze is directed beyond your shoulder to the window still, and the sky beyond it. <clears throat> it isn't particularly sunny, but I don't think it's too cold outside. Going for a walk might not be a bad idea. What do you think, dear one? You think that you would like to finish undressing the princess as soon as possible, so you can make some progress in dressing her again. The sight of all this exposed skin is bad for your heart. Fortunately, you were able to make quick work of the princess's nightgown despite your initial mishaps, spurred on, spurred on perhaps by your anxiety. You're such a useless gay. Oh my god. You bid the princess to stand, which she does, and neatly, she steps out of her nightgown, her motions, once again, as graceful and as fluid as a dancer's. This task completed, you search hurriedly, worriedly, for the princess's red dress. Where is it? You cannot find it. Sweat begins to prickle in the back of your neck. Bet you would do the same. I... Shut the fuck up. Your palms, meanwhile, feel uncomfortably clammy. The moments pass awkwardly, uneasily, as you search. The princess standing there, all the while as naked as the day she was born. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Why? <clears throat> Why did you not find her day? Why did you not find her day dress before you stripped her of her night one? What a fool you are. The princess, noting her panic, giggles, then says, <laughs> Are you looking for my dress? Yes, you reply, your face flushed. That is what you're doing. I thought so. I did wonder before you started undressing me why you'd not ask where it was. Maybe it slipped your mind? It had slipped your mind, yes, to your shame. You were too busy trying not to fixate upon the princess's bared skin to think about how best to conceal it. My dress is in my arm armoire. 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 Pronunciation. I was right, armoire. Hehe. <laughs> I was right. Yeah, yes, isn't the fancy words? Yeah. Can't take away their fancy words. The princess glancing over at the uh, oh my god another word a form aforementioned piece of furniture that armoire of hers is an intricately carved wooden structure large enough or so you estimate to fit inside it enough dresses to attire a whole ballroom's worth of princesses oh god is it like a walk-in closet i like to wear the red one it's my favorite would you be a dear and fetch it for me I especially like that fancy words called pri I especially like the fancy words called primal. God. I'm not sure it's not fancy, but we can make it fancy. <laughs> oh my god! Don't fall on my headphones. I don't wish to rush you, but it is rather cold in here, especially while I'm still naked. She raises a good point. You turn away from the princess and make your way to her more. Once there, you open its wooden doors and peruse the clothes hanging within. It is just as you expected. Inside that wardrobe lies numerous dresses, all of them finely sewn and decorated with no shortage of ribbons, lace, and iridescent pearls. You find the princess's red dress soon enough, then hurry to her side. Not as fancy as the name Aries. Yeah! So fancy. So fancy fancy. <laughs> with, your spoil, with your spoils in hand, you hurry to dress her, concealing once again the princess's pale skin beneath layers upon layers of soft red velvet. <coughs> Sorry. She is easier to look at now, you think, with her skin concealed. It's very pretty. 
That might have been the most nerve-wracking task you have ever had to accomplish, even more so than your perilous escape through the foggy forest. You, uh... You're gonna have to do it more, just so you know. Wish that you were that... No. No, 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 no. <clears throat> Why, it seems a small miracle that you can still remember how to breathe. Ah, that's much better. Thank you, dear one, for your help. You've not been here for a full day, but I already wonder what I'd do without you. Shyly, you assure the princess that you did nothing, really. Nothing beyond your job. God, broke my breath right of me. <laughs> you did not do anything incredible. And in any case, being complimented by somebody as so pretty is embarrassing. Aw, oh, don't be like that. I want to compliment you. Why shouldn't I? When you've been so helpful, it'd be rude not to, and anyway... I think you're very pretty, too. <laughs> Oh my, uh, oh my indeed, oh, 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 me, uh, little old me? <clears throat> Your face flushes from this more deeply than ever before, uh, yeah, okay. You ought to count yourself lucky, really, with what, with all of this excessive blushing, that the princess does not seem to possess any vampiric tendencies. You're making yourself quite the easy target. Now, the princess declares, why don't we go for a walk? It's a nice enough day, and I get so very bored of being cooped up inside. You can't think of any particular objections to raise this remark, and you think that the princess might have a point. The castle, though expansive, is somewhat stifling. The walls are so very thick they put you in mind of a crypt. With your With your acquiescence assured, the princess quits her chamber, her posture elegant, and her gait unhurried. <laughs> I wish I was gay. <laughs> she seems not to walk as she navigates her way through the seemingly, seemingly endless hallways of her home, but to float like a cloud. What's stopping you, Cal? Like, what's stopping you from being gay? Hmm? Hmm? The hem of her dress swish the hem of her dress swishes around her legs and her hair shifts like a shroud. The castle's courtyard, meanwhile, is a sadly lack is sadly lacking in comparison to the princess's beauty. The courtyard is fenced in by the castle's walls, which look in the stark midday light, tall and imposing, faceless soldiers standing sentinel. Though the sun is out, it is not particularly bright and neither is, is it particularly warm. The courtyard itself, meanwhile, is in a state of disarray. The flower beds are in shambles all overgrown with weeds. It is all rather depressing. How about you make me gay, wink wink? Wink wink, wink wink, wink wink, wink wink, wink wink. What if, what if, <laughs> what if when you say wink wink, it's just a blink because it's too wink, so it's just... <laughs> wink wink. <laughs> or is it frog blink? Wink wink. <laughs> anyway. The princess's castle might be grand in scale, but the courtyard itself is simple, hemmed in to a claustrophobic degree like a coffin. The princess, however, seems not to share your dolorous mood. She, instead, looks elated by her newfound surroundings, her smile unwavering. She gambles like a lamb, flitting hither and thither as she examines the weed-infested flower beds. Her frolicking comes to a cease, however, by a bush. One is full of bright red roses. Oh, how very pretty! Do you think they are gorgeous, dear one? Do you not think they are gorgeous, dear one? The flowers are not too disappointing, you suppose? <laughs> what? They're not too disappointing? They make for a fine spectacle, in fact, a welcome splash of colour when contrasted to the dullness and the drabness which permeates the rest of the courtyard. Though the other flowers in the beds are wilted, withering things, 
It is not so for these roses. Interesting. They choke out the other flowers with their thorns. This is going to be a metaphor for later. Or a pre- Oh, what is the word? I keep forgetting the word. That's a whole ass flower though? Yeah, it is. I want to eat it. Sorry. Um, they are rich, bright. They are rich, bright red, just like blood. And their head, their heads so full, they almost seem, they seem almost to droop beneath the weight of their own engorged petals. Well, <laughs> look at me eat. I want to eat it. it. Looks yummy. They are pretty, in a sense, but there's something unsettling about them too. Something that is almost obscene. Like, why are they growing when other things are not? Why? Exactly. How did these roses become so very red? What has been sustaining them? Could it be possible that these roses have been draining the life from the other flowers which are struggling to grow within the garden? I said it. I said it. It is a fanciful thought, but... Oh, they are simply divine. Look at all these roses. Uh, look, Looking at these roses always lifts my spirits. They are really my favorite flowers. I simply must pick one of them. Perhaps I can use them to decorate my bedchamber. It could be- uh, it could use a bit of color. The princess reaches out as so to pluck one of the roses free from its resting place amongst its brethren. She's gonna prick her finger. You watch her. Your breath baited, anxious that this gesture might result in perforated flesh and bright red blood. Oh, it's not gonna happen. But the princess is not as clumsy as you fear. Of course she is not. Who did you think she was? You. Rather than worrying about other people, you would be better served if you worried more about yourself. The princess holds her newly pilfered Pilfered, rose to her nose and inhales. <laughs> her eyelids flooding, falling shut as the flowers scent sweets as the flowers sweet scent washes over her. A few minutes of silence pass. Then the princess begins to toy with the petals which adorn the flower's crown. Roses are just weeds, but pretty. You can say that about any weeds, any pretty, any flower. Honestly, you can say that about anything. I mean, weeds technically are just plants. Are just undesirable plants. Like, some people grow weeds on purpose. Uh, some weeds on purpose. You know, like, dandelions technically are weeds, but you can also eat dandelions, so they're a very good source of, um... Food? <laughs> anyway, enough with my botany lesson. <clears throat> now, let me see. I wonder what fate has in store for me. She loves me. Fate loves you. Interesting. Interesting words of phrase. Uh, phrase phrasing. Interesting phrasing. The princess plucks the petal from the flower's unburdened head. She loves me. Oh, I see. <laughs> she loves me. She loves me not. The princess continues with his childish incantation, all the while stripping her rose slight slowly and methodically of its petals. These petals flutter about the princess like bloody snow. The princess's voice, meanwhile, echoes throughout the courtyard, even more melodic than the strains of pianola. Of a pianola. She loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, she loves me not. The princess's fingers hover over the final petal, which crowns her nearly denuded flower. Then, with a triumphant smile, she declares, She loves me! I knew it! You watch the princess, amused by her girlish good cheer. The little mantra she has been reciting is one that you are familiar with. The girls at the conservatory also used to engage in this little game, the younger ones at least, who believed that a fairy tale prince would whisk them away. Wait, she? Damn, she's gay. <laughs> Didn't even notice that. I just assume everyone in this game is gay. It's just, it's just how it is. You might have per uh, participated in this game yourself when you were a child yourself, but you never pinned your hopes and dreams on a handsome prince. 
Hey, your interest in princes has always been minimal. <laughs> when it comes to fair princesses, though... Yeah. yeah. Well, that is a different matter altogether, isn't it? Pleasantly, you ask the princess who love, whose love it is she wishes to court. A query which makes the princess giggle. Ow, fuck. Ow, sorry, my foot just started hurting for no reason. It's okay, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear one, who else would I be thinking of? Naturally, I was thinking of you! <laughs> Naturally? She says it so easily, as though you ought to have suspected as much. And indeed, part of you did. You wanted to believe, yet part of you was afraid to. Ah, sorry. You do not want to be arrogant enough to assume that the princess might care for your affections? You begin to blush, your cheeks almost as red as a rose's, while the princess laughs. She laughs, and she laughs, and she laughs. Her voice clear and sweet like a nightingale's song, as though you are the funniest thing she has ever seen. You never liked being laughed at when you dwelt within the walls of the conservator, but this is different with her. You have not known her for all that long, yet you are already entranced by her, ensnared. Uh, like a rose wraps its thorns around the other flowers and suffocate them. What is the word that I'm thinking of? It was pre, like, not premeditated. It's like for, foreshadowing. That's the word I'm looking for. Foreshadowing. Wish I was a wolf so I have a chance with her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can just uh, pretend. Just pretend for a little bit. Just pretend. <laughs> oh my. The princess's laughter tapers off into a series of giggles as, smiling, she wipes her eyes with the back of her hand. <laughs> that was quite the amusing diversion. But I just had an idea. You look at the princess curiously. What idea? You can't tell. Cannot even begin to guess. I just thought that all this watching must be boring to you, the princess says, tossing the rose strip stem clear carelessly to the ground. You should give it a try. Please do, it'll be fun. Hmm. The princess retrieves a second rose from the bushes, deftly snapping it between her fingers and offers it to you. I want to see what fate has in store for you too. You smile at the princess, touched by her enthusiasm. Hmm. Indulging in childish games like this might not be the best use of your time, but the princess looks so very determined you would not wish to hurt her. What could be the harm, really, in consenting? The only real casualty of the game would be that of a would be one singular rose, the rose that the princess is holding towards you. It's already dead, anyway. You reach out, meaning to accept the princess's offering, but... Oh no! You're clumsy and you seize the stem of the rose with a touch too much strength. Oh god. Oh, why do you always do this to yourself? I mean, wait. <laughs> uh, why, why does this happen to you? The head of the rose might be pretty, but there is more to a rose than its bright red flowers. Roses have thorns too. In fact, you are now be being painfully reminded of. Pain flares through your fingers and you gasp. Why did you- Don't- Be careful! You sound like your teacher. But this one was actually your fault, kind of. You take a step back, the hem of your skirt swishing around your ankles. Your finger is stinging and so are your eyes. Hey, Aries, what you doing? What's this game about? Hi, Sam! Hi, Sam! Um, this game is called It Gets So Lonely Here, and it is about women, and angst, and po and murder, mostly, um, but like a good kind of murder, you know? You know, the yandere kind of murder that we all enjoy, so <laughs> I'm actually on Route 3, and there might be more to this, because I see I have not achieved nearly 
but I haven't even achieved half of the game's content, so I believe there's more to it. This is about women. Sounds like a game people would like. We like women here. <laughs> yes, we do like women here. Oh god. <clears throat> anyway. The main character has pricked her finger on a rose. Your finger is stinging and so are your eyes. You're crying. You ought to have been more careful. Why were you so stupid? That, these are not her thoughts. You poor dear, you're bleeding. The princess exclaimed, alarmed. Uh, exclaims, alarmed. Then she frowns. This is all my fault. If I'd not suggest this silly game, you've, I've, this never would have happened. Please let me take care of you. Oh, she's better than me. <laughs> she is better than me. And how is she going to do that? Perhaps she means to take a handkerchief from her pocket, with which she might staunch your wound. Princesses tend to carry handkerchiefs around them, around with them, don't they? Silken ones. Ooh, silk handkerchief. How else could they give brave knights tokens of their gratitude once these uh, aforementioned knights have successfully slain dragons? <laughs> oh my god. Princesses can hardly dispense kisses and favors. It's sim it simply is not done. That is what you always thought, but... Please, hold still. This might sting a bit. This princess is anything but ordinary. Rather than take a handkerchief after her out, out of her pocket, she, instead, encloses her white, slender fingers around your hand. Is she magic? Does she have magic? Carefully, as though she is handling a precious object, she raises her hand, her eyes affixed with uh, all the while on the beads of startling startlingly startlingly crimson blood which are oozing luridly from your wound she licks her lower lip then she dips her head <laughs> um <coughs> uh <laughs> she parts her mouth with a soft sigh, which borders on this, uh, the sen sensuous. She slips your injured digit between her teeth. How sharp is this rose? This sounds like a huge gash. I can't be bleeding that much. Uh, I don't know. I mean, probably a couple of thorns, probably a couple of pricks rather than just one, but... She is a bit pretty, though, so yeah, she's pretty! Oh my god, doll, that's so gay. That is so gay. I'm so lonely now thanks to this game. <laughs> yeah. This is the most sapphic thing I've ever seen in my life. Licking blood off of another girl's fingers. Pretty gay. Pretty gay. So much for princes not dispensing kisses as a token of appreciation. Oh no, I tripped and pricked my everywhere on the road. Just launching yourself into a rose bush. Oh no! Oops. Oh, I'm so clumsy. Oh god, that might- Um, actually we might not be too off from the mark here. But kind of going in a darker direction. <laughs> Maybe. This might has have not been a conventional kiss, but feels intimate regardless. Almost startlingly so. Yeah, she's literally kissing your insides. <clears throat> the princess's lips, which are as red as any rose, are enclosed around your index finger. <laughs> you can feel the warmth of the princess's mouth about your skin and the wetness of it. These sensations make your whole body quake. You did not expect this. Tremulously, in a voice which wavers, you ask the princess what it is she's doing. Oh? The princess glances up at you, her mouth still enclosed around your finger. Uh, <clears throat> didn't I tell you? I'm trying to stop the bleeding. Yes, you gathered as much, but... 
Oh no, I pricked the inside of my mouth. Oh no, I actually ate a whole bushel of roses and they made my, my, my mouth hurts. Oops. <laughs> oh god. You guys. <laughs> Is there a problem? I'm not making you uncomfortable, am I? It is not, as you say, uh, is not, you say, that she is making you uncomfortable, per se, but this is rather awkward. You did not expect it, that is all. And she is not worried, and is she not worried that this is unhygienic? Unhygienic? The princess blinks. She is the very picture of innocence. Which is funny, really, given your finger is still nestled against her tongue. <clears throat> I don't know what you mean by that exactly. But I heard this is the best way to take care of my take care of cuts. My nursemaid used to do this for me when I was a child. It's what you're supposed to do. And you ask her voice uh, your voice catching in your throat. Did her nursemaid keep staunching her wounds on- keep staunching her wounds with her mouth when she grew older? Well, no, but my nursemaid was dismissed when I was eight years old. That's the normal way of things. I have my lady's maid take- uh, look- to look after me then. How very interesting. And did they ever clean her wounds like this? No. <laughs> The princess says, smiling mischievously. Because I'm not clumsy enough to cut myself, silly. Now that was quite the sharp retort. He did not expect it. She's ugh, fucking... I, yeah, what? Yeah. Oh my god. She's so fucking cute. Uh, you do this. Okay. Your face turns even redder. All right, then. If such a thing is possible, though this might perhaps be to your benefit. With some luck, all of your blood will flow to your face rather than to your finger and your bleeding will stop. <laughs> Look, I don't care if things turn out to be crazy. I want that. I know. I, if things turn out to be crazy, even better. <laughs> even better. Has it stopped? Your injury was not a deep one. There should be no need for the princess to keep on suckling, but... She still is. You are not accustomed to the intimacy of this nature. It is making your heart flutter. If the princess knew what her mouth was doing to you, you are sure she would not be so familiar. You feel quietly, crushingly confident that she would scorn you for your feelings and deem them unnatural. You're all... We both just admitted that we're gay. Well, she admitted that she's gay, so... And she has the thing for you, so I'm pretty sure it's okay. It would be- it would not be the first time. Oh, I see. At this point, you should be used to the rejection. It still stings, though. It stings much, much more than any thorn or any rose ever could. <laughs> She's gay, gay, you're gay. <laughs> it's okay. It's just... Oh no, a rose pickled my chest. <laughs> Oh no! Alright. <clears throat> the days pass following your misadventures in the Rose Garden in a relaxed, unhurried sort of a manner. Your mad dash through the forest is beginning to feel like a distant memory, so much so you can scarcely recall the raw, naked fear you once felt as you fled for your life. There is no running to be had while you are working for a princess. You would have nowhere else to run, and, in any event, there is no longer to any reason to run. The shadows which once tormented you have at long last begun to recede. You can scarcely recall as you lay down in your bed the petty cruelties you were subjected to by your classmates at the conservator. They no longer matter. Your attention is focused, not upon yourself, but upon the princess. Oh god, no, don't. <laughs> I mean, there was some naked stuff going on earlier, but... <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, uh... The more time you expend with her, the more you come to care for her. You have become quite besotted with her, but you are yet to realize it. Well, I never. How very ignorant can one girl be of her own feelings? 
The princess is not half so ignorant as you are, though, despite having spent her whole life within the palace's walls. You miss Nako stuff? Yeah, you- uh, kind of. Do you, there was just un undressing a little bit and dressing. <clears throat> That's all. Is she a vampire? <laughs> I don't know. The weight of her own feelings are not unknown to her, and during one stormy night, she chose to make them known to you. Definitely not a straight. Definitely not a straight. You are in the prince's chambers later, perhaps, than you ought to be. Later than is strictly appropriate. Who cares? Oh god. <laughs> it is dark outside, and there is little save the light of the moon to alleviate it. That and the fire which crackles in the grate. You have only just finished stoking that fire, that very fire, and now you rise. You look at the princess who is lying in her bed, and you bid her a good night, as you have many past nights. With a neat curtsy, you turn to leave, but the princess's plaintive, plaintive voice gives you pause. Oh god. Oh no! It's gonna get to the gay! It's gonna get more gay! Oh, I can't believe it's getting more gay by the second! <clears throat> Wait, dear one. Do not go... not just yet. Perplexed, you pause, then look back at the princess. Though she is smiling, her expression is unusually one. Is she alright? I'm 90% sure it doesn't matter what she is, vampire zombie goes crazy, we gotta be into it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I agree. I 100% agree. <clears throat> oh, I'm sure I'll be fine. It's just nice like this, you know, which... Make me feel a little out of sorts. And what, you ask, does she mean by that? Only that it is very cold and very dark. And it is very windy, besides, I'm afraid there'll be a storm later. It was awfully cloudy earlier when we went out for a walk. The princess is not mistaken about that. The sky, when the pair of you prom prom promenaded, promenaded, promenaded about the gardens earlier, was gray and steely, the wind bitingly cold. You can hear the wind wa rattling mournfully against the panes in the princess's bedchamber. The princess's cattle, ah, castle is built of stone, and it is well fortified, but even with the fire, it is rather cold. You do not like to think of how much chillier, by comparison, it will be in your humble bedchamber, which is not fortunate enough to own its own fireplace. It might sound childish, but I've always found it hard to sleep on stormy nights like this. They make me feel uncomfortable. She's so cute! <laughs> you look at the princess with no small degree of sympathy. No longer clad in her bright red dress, she looks oddly, uncommonly vulnerable. Will she really be alright, all alone in her oversized bed, in her high ceilings, ceilinged bedchamber? You know it is silly of you to, to contemplate such a query. Why would she not be alright? There's nobody in the castle to hurt her, but still, you fret for her. As her lady's maid, you, it is your job to fret for her. You would never want to miss, to mistress, ah, uh, what the fuck? You would never want your mistress to feel unhappy. You ask the princess what it is she would have you do, and the princess perks up at this, please, perhaps, that you are taking the initiative. <clears throat> uh, I wouldn't like to take up too much of your time when it is so very late, but would you mind sitting with me a while longer and reading to me, provided that you can, of course? <laughs> Oh god. Oh god. This is a fair question, but your pride bristles regardless. Basically, re you reassure the princess that yes, of course you could read. You were a poor student in many aspects of the conservator, but you had some something of a gift when it came to literary arts. That's something we do not have in common. Ugh, sorry. Reading books is all you have ever been any good at. Oh, I see. I suppose I should have known. You're so incredible. I sometimes wonder if there's anything I can't is if there's anything you can't do. <laughs> the 
The princess's high praises make you flush. Awkwardly, you look away. So awkward, all the time. Being able to read, you, reassure, you reassure her, is not such a great feat. I mean, it was at the time. Not so. Not everyone gets the privilege of that. Perhaps it isn't where you hail from, but here it is. Very few of my old servants could read, and they certainly couldn't read the books that I like. Very suspicious. This piques your interest. Intrigued, you ask the princess what books exactly she likes. Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm fond of fairy tales, you see. Old ones from, uh, old ones from centuries past. I have a collection of them here, the princess says, indicating a book on her bedside table, as thick as a mortuary slab. Thick as a mortuary slab for foreshadowing. <clears throat> the book is old, though, and the bindings are weak. The page is brittle, the writing woefully old-fashioned. I didn't trust any of my past servants with that book, but I think you would do a good job breathing life into these old stories. Would you mind reading to them, reading to me for just a brief while? Please, dear one, oh please. The princess's request seems a simple one, expressed sweetly. So much so, you see no reason to refuse her. You take a seat beside the, prin beside the princess, upon her luxurious bed, which sinks beneath your weight. Why is this not me? <laughs> then you retrieve the leather-bound book, a book which is resting upon her bedside table, and spread it open. I can spread more open if you- <clears throat> The pages of the book are very brittle, like the princess said, and the bindings of the book are loose. You can feel, in the heft of the book's main fold, pages, that the weight of the age is concealed within it. The weight of the age is How old is this book? Perhaps this is, it is as old as the castle in which it resides. <laughs> it is with a quiet voice, hesitant at first, that you begin to read to the princess a tale of courtly love which culminates in a lavish and a lavish wedding ceremony. All the while you read, the princess listens to you, enraptured, hanging, or so it seems, upon your every word. Once you read, once you reach the final phrase embossed upon the pages of this aged tome, and they lived happily ever after, the princess sighs, as though this tale has touched her very soul. Ah. <sighs> What, uh, would that there was a handsome prince to marry me, she says somberly. Or, better yet, a beautiful princess. At this point, I think I would even settle for a, lo a lowly sc scullery, uh, scullery maid. You blush at this idle remark and mumble softly that this would not be proper. I think with how I exist, no matter what I do, is gay. Same! Love being gay. Love it. Love it. Homophobia and all. <laughs> it just feeds me. <laughs> um, getting sidetracked. The storm outside is still squall squalling? And you still- and you have never been one to raise your voice. You do not expect, therefore, that the princess will overhear you. But she does. She observes you, your head resting against your pillow- uh, her pillow. Her head resting against her pillow and says what would be the problem with that hmm as my maid shouldn't as my maid shouldn't be happy what oh comma I, I didn't see the comma as my maid shouldn't my happiness come before any silly ideas of pro uh, propriety <laughs> well, of course you reply but for a princess to marry a scullery scullery maid i still don't know what that means you're still hung up about that, the princess titters. Don't pay it much heed. I'm just talking to myself. As if anything like that would ever happen, when there is no priest around who would officiate it. You think that there are greater issues with the princess's plan than the lack of a priest, though she does present a good point. The castle is an empty one. 
even with the princess where even if the princess were to find somebody that she loves there would be nobody to make such an, a wedding official you cannot help but feel like you have avoided the, a good deal of nuance nu no, nuisance sorry but by the same token you do not feel a touch do you not feel a touch disappointed well never mind <clears throat> That was a nice story, the princess said. But I'm not sleepy yet, and it's still storming outside. Won't you read me one more? You would not mind, you reply, but it is getting light. You really ought to return to your own chamber. I know, but can't you find it in your heart to read one story to me? Just one. You can choose the short you can choose a short one. I won't complain. You have some doubts about that. But as before, you cannot resist the princess's demands. It is not, do you think, because she is a princess, though, though that is, of course, a part of it, but because she is, well, radiant. Why so fucking gay? Why are you so fucking gay, man? She's cute. She's so cute. She's been cute this whole time, and I bet she's gonna be cute while murdering us. I'll bet you she's gonna be so fucking cute and only be able to handle it. <laughs> you would not, you think, as you turn to the next story recounted in this aged com compendium, want to upset her. You would rather cut out your own tongue. That foreshadowing as well. You read another story to the princess, which is of a similar vein in the last, to the last. Impossible adventures culminating at their close in a happy marriage. The tale delights the princess just as much as the tale you read prior, and she begs for another, then another. One bedroom story soon becomes five, and even then, when the candles which flicker on the princess's bedside are close to guttering out, the princess is not satisfied. This game is longer than I expected. Yeah, but it's like, I love, I love the length. I think it's like a very good length, and especially for it to be for a free game, it's pretty awesome. Pretty freaking awesome, if you ask me. There's got to be some way we can be gay and still alive. There's always some way. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out, I guess. Earlier we were drowned, and then after that we were buried alive in a casket. <clears throat> yeah. We'll see how we go this time. Uh, this is not satisfied. Like a grasping, greedy child, she has never heard of moderation. When she wants something, she seeks to glut herself with it. Her only request that of more. This is free, tell me grab it. It's on Steam. It's on Steam. I have it on Steam. It might be on um, Itch.io, but I don't know. But yeah, it is free and it's amazing. I definitely, definitely recommend going back and playing it. <clears throat> it's amazing. If she were less comely, perhaps her inability to adhere to the wor word no would be seen as a character de defect. Lee, hi, welcome, welcome. Ready to be murdered? Ready for murder? Are we ready for murder? It seems about time. It seems about time for the murder. <laughs> These stories last about like two, two and a half, three hours. <clears throat> and um, yeah, it seems like we're going there real quick. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> murder, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. Oh my god. Okay, okay. <laughs> And so when she makes the, her next, uh, the princess is very comely, however, and so when she makes her next request, you almost agree offhand without considering her ramifications. Oh no, what's happening? No killings in my library now, time for game. Yes! Good, how about you? I'm good. I love, I love playing this game. I love this story. It's so good. I am a little sleepy though. 
that's neither here nor there because I'm always sleeping. What's new? What's new? But my back is doing great because of my new mattress. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with my time. Okay, anyway. Um, <clears throat> you're not here to hear me ramble on. You're here for the game. Well, aren't we all here for the game? Aren't we all here for this wonderful murderous game? <laughs> Let's continue. Oh god, she's so cute. I think I could go to sleep now, but the storm is still raging. I feel lonely on my own, in this big, empty bed, so... Soul? Hee <laughs> thank you. I know. The princess's eyes light up like the night sky in a thunderstorm. It's always contra contrasted whenever they say something about the, the girls, or I think specifically this girl. Um, it's always contrasted with something really, like, dark. Like, night sky lit up like a night sky in a thunderstorm. It's not just stars, it's it's lightning. Why don't you sleep with me? <laughs> Win for the gaze. Yes. <laughs> yes. You stare at the princess, your eyes wide as goose eggs. Slowly, you blink. Then, just as slowly, you bid her to repeat herself. Didn't you hear me? <laughs> Maybe you've been so busy cleaning up after me, you've neglected to clean out your own ears. <laughs> I said, dear one, would you like to sleep with me? Yeah. If that is the question she truly means to ask, then it is easy enough to answer. Of course you would like to sleep with her. It would be an honor. But would it really be all right for you to accept such an invitation? She's cute. I can't hear. It must be a gross b breach of protocol, surely, for a lowly domestic such as yourself to share a bed with a princess. This is a trap? Yeah, but it's a very, very sweet trap. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Still, yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love we all agree. We all agree on this. We're still gonna do it. You sit upon the princess's bed frame, uh, bedside, fretting, while she observes with wide eyes, wide beseeching eyes. She is waiting. Well, what's the matter, dear one? Why do you tarry so? Could it be? The princess's lower lip begins to tremble. Don't cry. Don't, don't you want to lie with me after all? The sorrow present in the princess's voice and in her face makes you feel awfully guilty. Hardly you console her. You tell her, in no uncertain terms, that if she truly wishes to partake in your company, then you have no qualms with it. Why would you? Well then, don't just stand there diddly daddly, silly. Come and join me. Come. Oh, I'll come, alright. <clears throat> and that is what you do. After returning briefly to your own chamber to change into your nightgown. Once dressed, you waste no time in returning to your impetuous princess's sides. Side. She's already lying in her glorious four-poster bed, awaiting your return, as the, you, though you are a knight errant to gone away to slay some wicked dragon. The princess giggles when you when she slap. Wow. Start over. I need to reset my brain. Hold on. Okay. The princess giggles when she sees you. In your haste to change, you have made a, hit, a hash of the buttons, and she bids you to come closer. <laughs> Who's doing the dressing now? Let me fix that for you, silly. Oh no, you say. You couldn't possibly let- I, I couldn't possibly let you do that. I am but a servant, after all. That was the first eye we've gotten for, from this character's perspective. Interesting. Man, I was gonna play Valor or Destiny or something, but I'm invested in this now. <laughs> yeah, this game grabs you in real fast. It just, you know, grabs you by the neck and drags you in, just like, just like all of these girls do. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Should it not be your job to dress her? Maybe so, the princess says. But I don't mind a bit of role reversal. It makes things more fun. <laughs> this is sounding like. 
that one gay movie, The Handmaiden. If you haven't seen The Handmaiden, go ahead and watch it, but it is sounding like that. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, like... Oh, no. I'm just gonna fall in love now, huh? Guess so. Do really good, though, like, what the fuck or how the fuck? I know! <laughs> oh my god, okay. You try a few more refutations, but in vain. The princess similar similar some 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 summarily summarily discards all of them. Quiet at the princess's mercy uh, quite at the princess's mercy. She might be even more stubborn than you are. You capitulate to her demands. You let the princess unbutton the front of your nightdress. Then rebutton them so the fabric of your plain gown is drawn shut. Why is this so intimate? This is, the most, this is way more intimate than anything else. Like, this, oh my god. First of all, brushing hair, super, super intimate. And then this, oh my god. I was taking notes on what she's into and what airs into because my mind is. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I mean, I'm flustered, but <laughs> fucking why? Oh my god, how do they know? The 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 writer for this game, amazing. Satisfied with her handiwork, she has very elegant hands. The princess draws back and puts them and pats the mattress beside her. Now come in. It must be horribly cold out there, but these sheets are warm. Especially with her. Okay. It's gonna say it. It's gonna say it, isn't it? Coyly, the princess smiles. And so am I. See? I'm fucking. Oh my god. Oh, it's so gay. Aries is into gays for real? Yeah, why? What else would I be into? Not gays? <laughs> Stupid. Oh my god. You feel like. You <laughs> why am I so flustered? <laughs> You feel warm yourself as you slide into bed besides the princess. <laughs> Your face- <coughs> Yes, this is appropriate. Your face is as red as the gown the princess so often wears. As red as the roses on the castle's grounds. <laughs> so cute, I know. All the while, your heart is fluttering. Does the princess know what an effect she is having on you? Surely she mustn't. Surely she must. How can any woman be so blind? Of course she does. Of course she does. There, the princess exclaims. Once your uh, once your body is lying besides hers, that is much better. Do you feel cozy now, dear one? <laughs> Let them cook. <laughs> don't cook. Wait, don't. Or maybe do cook. <laughs> anyway, uh, might be spoilers, but we don't know yet. You swallow, and with a shaky voice, you reassure, reassure her. Yes, you are cozy. You are quite cozy indeed. Very good. The storm might be raging outdoors, but it can't get us here. I know, when I'm with you, I'll be safe. Oh my god. You'll be safe, but will I? I don't know. Oh god. It's strange, but... The princess reaches out, then takes your hand in hers, twining your fingers together like a giant... Uh, uh, holding. Oh my god! <laughs> All right. When I'm with you, I feel so very light. It's as though nothing in the world can hurt me. You make me feel safe, so I want make to make you feel safe too. I don't care any. I don't care anymore. What the fuck is? She is not. This is the most romantic thing I've ever read, ever. I love how spiky her hair is, though. It's really cute. <laughs> the bag is so spiky. Oh man. Oh no. Oh no. <clears throat> I'll take very 
very good care of you. Promise. You return her smile with one of your own, touched by her thoughtfulness, though something about her promise does make you wonder. Should it not be your job to look after her as a domestic? In a way, the princess replies after a pause, but you've been taking good care of me already. Now I need to return the favor. As a princess, I'm supposed to look after my vassals, vassals. It's all part of the job description. <laughs> You're unaware that being a princess came with a job description. You thought the profession came with a few, with far fewer written responsibilities and far fewer forms to sign than, say, becoming a doctor or, or an astrophysicist or a mathematis mathematics professor. You tell the princess this sleepily and she laughs. You say some funny things, dear one. I think you must be tired. Rest your head. You've been working so very, so, so hard. I think you deserve it. Yes, you think only half conscious. You think you deserve it too. I want to die seeing this. My life is a lie and a mistake. <laughs> You have been working hard for a long time now. You've been running for even longer. But now, at long last, you feel like you can let your fears go. Can you? Can you? I don't know. Every time you do this, it doesn't end well for you. <laughs> your eyelids begin to droop. Your body beluggered by a sudden, all-consuming fatigue. And, in a quiet, understanding sort of way, your consciousness is conveyed to Morpheus's kingdom. Oh god, what's gonna happen? Please, come on, just a happy ending. I don't know, I really don't think any of these has a happy ending. We still don't know anything about this princess here. Like, why the fuck is she here? How has she been sustaining herself all this time? Hmm? Your sleep is a deep one, despite the storm which rages outside, outdoors. The wind is howling like a couple of wild cats, both locked in a vicious and bloodthirsty bout to the death. But you do not hear it. <laughs> Swaddled by the warm blankets about you, and soothed by the princess's presence, you are immune from all the ills of the world. When you are with the princess, you feel safe, secure, and... Yes, you even feel loved. It is a pity, then, that these feelings do not last for very long. There we go, there we go! Oh dear, what is it? Where are we now? I don't recognize this place. Hmm, I wonder. Oh my god. <laughs> You know that something is wrong, catastrophically so, the moment you open your eyes. <laughs> your thoughts are hopelessly jumbled, but you are certain that, when you fell asleep, it was in a bed, a nice warm bed, no less, beneath soft, comfortable sheets. You are not lying in a bed right now, though. You are not, in fact, lying at all. Oh, I'm still at this, oops. Hmm, I wonder. You are standing, instead, against a cold hall wall made of stone. Kinky. That's kind of kinky. <laughs> Pretty kinky. <laughs> Let's go skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the curves of your back is pressed against the wall so intimately you can feel its icy chill seeping through the fabric of your nightgown. Your feet, which are bare, are similarly pressed against cold, unfeeling stone. They feel so frigid you cannot help but tremble. You are trembling so much you can feel your teeth chattering together. They sound like castanets. The sound is almost jaunty as it echoes through your cell, for that is, indeed, where you are. The princess's bedchamber, wherein you fell asleep, is a thing now of the past. You are standing instead, you realize, with a sharp start, in the cell of some great underground dungeon. 
you swallow, and when you do, you can taste something bitter on your tongue. Your stomach is beginning to churn with anxiety. You feel like you are going to be sick, a feeling which wells up inside you to a staggering degree when you catch notice of the stench. You are not, do you realize, the only one in the dungeon. There are others here, others attired in the simple black and white outfits of servants which look much like the dress that you once wore. The others who are with you, however, in this expansive cell, mankled to the walls, are in no fit state to speak to you, nor to tell you of their plights. They are all unfeeling, unseeing, unbreathing. They are all dead. Hang on now. We're going to the intro, the intro, the music we had in the beginning. Did this happen all the time? Or was this, did this happen every time? I don't remember. But it's quite spooky now. It's quite spooky. You cannot approach these servants to check their pulses, for you yourself are restrained. But even if you could, there would be no point. There is no way any human could survive the wounds which have been inflicted upon these sad, slumped bodies. Wow, okay. Over there you see a woman slumped in front of her once white apron stained with blackish blood. The front. Okay. Oh god. There is a gaping wound on her stomach, one through which her entrails have half escaped in some sort of burgundy goop which might once have been pale pink. Yeah. There is another woman slumped beside the first of a smaller stature. She is skinnier. Maybe she is not a woman after all, but an adolescent like yourself. She might even be younger. Very kinky. Oh, I think this is a little bit beyond kinky. <laughs> the girl's age of lack or lack of did not preclude her attacker from inflicting upon her horrors. Alas, for her body is even more mutilated than the first. Her body is peppered with even more wheels than her face has, and her face has been half smashed in. Only one eye remains, staring fixedly at the wall opposed her, opposite her, in the re, in the ruined remains of what was once her skull. God damn, this is, oof, this a lot. Over there, you see a woman who is missing both her arms and her lower jaw. Over there, you see another one who is missing her entire lower half. Where have her legs gone? You have no idea. The injuries inflicted upon these bodies are ghastly, but their advanced decay is enough to turn your stomach. You probably die of illness before she fucking kills you of anything else. You know not how long these carcasses have been lying down here. But they have not. But they have become to putrefy. You feel you fear a similar fate might befall you, should you stay here. You need to escape. Fitfully, you struggle against the manac manacles which bind you. But alas, it is of no use. You cannot free yourself from these walls. Your restraints are much too strong, and you are much too weak. Panic rises up in your throat, cold and icy, while terror seizes your heart. This too, glacial. It is obvious that escape is impossible, but still you squirm and writhe like a rat caught in a firestorm. There is little point, however, to your struggles. You succeed in nothing as you attempt to free yourself, save making the steel manacles dig into your abused wrists more sharply than ever. You gasp. That hurts. Well, you ought to have known that that would not work. The very definition of insanity is, you know, performing a set of actions over and over again, hoping for a different response. In that sense, perhaps one could argue optimism is not so very different from insanity. Now that is an interesting point to consider, would you not agree? No, evidently not. You are still trying to escape, you foolish girl. As if that will do any good. A cla the clatterous rattling of her steely restraints is rather start starting to get- uh, what? 
Oh my god. The clangorous rattling of your steely restraints is rather starting to get on my nerves. You're making enough noise to raise the dead down there in your dark, dingy cell, and all your screaming is hardly helping and and all your screaming is hardly helping matters. I wish that you would cease this infernal racket, but I know you will not. Nothing I say ever gets through to you. Not that you ever listened to me in the first place. Perhaps you would listen to her, though. Is she not your kind, considerate mistress? Wow! Here we go! <clears throat> I mean, oh no! 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 Oh. <laughs> We just want happy game moments. I mean, maybe you do, but I'm quite liking the outcome of this. <laughs> Look now, she has come all this way into the darkest depths of this cold cath of the castle's cold, inhospitable dungeon to see you. Is that not kind of her? <laughs> oh dear one, the princess trails, entering the dungeon with a series of light, lilting steps. It would seem you are finally awoken. How are you? Based on all the infernal racket you've been making, it would seem you it would seem like you have no shortage of energy. Balefully you turn your head so as to meet the eyes of the princess. She is standing but a few paces away beneath the ru roughly hewn stone arch which bids one entry, but rarely ever an exit, to the dungeons. The dungeons are dull and drab, but the princess is wearing her favorite red dress. No wonder she wears that all the time. It is so bright and brilliant, for a few moments it hurts you to look at her. Once the red of the princess's outfit made you think of romance, now it makes you think of violence. Come on, she's got she's got violent um character uh traits all over her. Look, she's all spiky and shit. <laughs> she's all spiky. You must be cute. <clears throat> You must forgive me for leaving you down here for so long. That was unfair of me. I did think of waiting here for, with you by your side till you awoke, but... Once again, the princess giggles, a light, airy giggle which does not at all suit the situation in which you have found yourself. A dungeon is not a fit place, after all, for a princess. It is horribly cold in here and so very drab, and there is nowhere no nice and soft to lay my head. I could have brought my pillows down from my bed, I suppose, and my blankets, but then they would have gotten dirty and that would be a disaster. <laughs> I need to be more careful. I wouldn't have anybody left to clean up after my messes soon, so uh, not when I've dispatched of you. Once again, the princess laughs. Her laughter is light and lilting, like the chiming of a silvery bell. But it does not little to alleviate your concern. We've heard this sentence before. If anything, it makes you feel even more alarmed. Did she say to dispatch of you? Yes, that's right. Could you not tell? I thought you might have figured that out already after waking up in my dungeon, silly. Still smiling, the princess takes another step towards you. Would that you could, you would cringe away from her, but you cannot. You are completely powerless. The princess, oh, hee hee, thank you. The princess reaches out and places a hand upon your cheek. Her skin is very white, and though her touch is cool, it is less so than if the frigid air in the dungeon. Though your body is aching, the princess's touch is gentle, and you find yourself leaning into it subconsciously. You wish she would keep holding you. You wish she would keep touching you. You luxuriate you luxuriate in her kindness as best as you can. But though the princess's caresses are tender, your circumstances rather undetermined then. How can you relax like this? Ah you're such a good girl, the princess says, in a cajoin cajo cud cudgeling sort of voice as one you might address a cat. You've been so lovely to me while we've been together. I really couldn't ask for a better servant. I feel as though I've been spoiled. 
Why, then you ask her? Is she doing this? Improbable as it sounds, she must be the one who claimed you up. Who changed you up. Chained you up. There is nobody else in the castle who could have committed such a feat. Everybody else is dead. Why, yes. How very astute of you. I was the one who orchestrated all of this naturally. Naturally, she says, as though her betrayal is a matter of course. Naturally. Why, you ask, is this so natural to her? What does she mean to do with you? Oh, only what I've done to all of my other servants. I have experience with this sort of thing, so please don't worry. I'll take good care of you. Okay, yes ma'am. And by taking good care of, she means... Naturally, I'll kill you. There we go. That's it. There it is again. That word which seems grossly inappropriate given all which has transpired. Naturally. There's nothing natural about this. Do you not think so? The princess examines you, her expression ponderous. It's natural to me, even if it isn't natural to other people. This just feels right. Imprisoning her servants in a dungeon and letting them die? Yes, exactly. There's a bit more to, to, to do it than that, though. Oh, of course there is. I like you, dear one, the princess says, in a voice which sounds uncommonly seriously. Serious. You have been good to me, like I said, and kind. For that, I will be eternally appreciative. You have been so good to me, in fact, that simply being with you is not enough. Not anymore. <laughs> Killing, yay, yay! <laughs> Your company can, can no longer content me. I am a greedy, selfish girl, you see. The princess smiles. The princess's smile widens into something sinister, her eyes flashing with a fiendish fever, the uh, fervor you have never before witnessed. And I don't want to feel you beside me. I want to f Oh my god. I want to feel you inside me. I mean, there's other ways we can get around to that, if you ask. I mean, you know, there's- yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of all the things your charming captive could have said, you did not expect that. I could do that without killing. You can- yep, you can do that without killing. The princess, perhaps, noticed your confu noticing your confusion, begins to giggle, a giggle even lighter than Murray Murray is that meringue? And just as airy. It is just as inoffensive. <laughs> I can see that you don't understand, dear one. But you aren't the only one. My last lady's maid said that, too. There were others. <gasps> Wainly, the princess sighs. A belegered woe is me sigh, which makes her look even younger than the scant handful of years she truly possesses. And the one before that, and the one before that, and the one before that. I thought that you, at least, might be able to appreciate my point of view, but perhaps not. I don't think it should be too complicated to grasp, really, but maybe my way of looking at the world is a little bit unique. That is what my nurse always used to say, at least, when she still had the breath to speak, of course. You look at the princess. Where else would you- where else there for you to look, really? Her eyes affixed to her face. Um, I know this is awful, but I really have to pee. <laughs> I really have to go to the bathroom, so I'm gonna leave her on a cliffhanger right now. Oh, I'll, I'll be right back. I promise I'll be as fast as I can, okay? Okay, I really have to go. Okay, three, two, one, go.
Okay, I'm back. Wow. Right. Okay. Continuing. Continuing. Because we need to know what happens. Oh my god. Uh, your eyes are fixed, fixed to her face. She's still smiling, but there is something sinister about her smile. Or perhaps, in your anxious state, you're only imagining that there is something sinister about her smile. It is easy to see which do not really see things which do not really exist when your surroundings are festooned to in shadows. In actuality, however, the princess does not look any different to how she usually does. Neither is she acting any different to the way she usually acts. She has not changed. It is only your perspective of her, of her that has changed. Tremendously, you ask the princess what she means. A question the princess is only too happy to answer. Oh my god, wait. I think my... I think my gain has been down the whole time, that's why. Wait, no? No, it's okay, anyway, continuing. <clears throat> It's simple, really. Like I said, you were wondering, weren't you, why there weren't any guards or any servants in the castle when you first arrived here? The question had crossed your mind, yes. You were sure that the princess said her ministers sent them away, though. Is that a lie? Of course it's a lie. Of course it's a fucking lie! I wasn't being hopefully truthful, no. I thought you would be afraid of me if you knew what had actually happened. And I didn't want that. I wanted you to stay with me. My ministers didn't send anybody away because I didn't have any ministers. I dispatched of them too. Did she know? You suppose you ought not to be surprised, but you still shudder regardless. My ministers weren't very much fun, I'm afraid. They had a lot of ideas that, about what I should and shouldn't do after my parents died. The princess stares at you. Her eyes wide like black holes, empty, yawning abyss. Ooh, yawning, that's a good word to use for there. So I killed them. Yes, gay. Very gay to be killing. <laughs> I killed my servants too, though I did a more thorough job with them than I did my ministers. I do not care for my ministers, you see. They were all fussy old men, but I did love my servants. I love my ladies' maids, and my undermaids, and my scullery maids, and my housekeeper, and my cooks, and my large retinue of retainers. They were like my family. They raised me in my parents' absence. I adored them. They were so very dear to me that I had no real choice. <laughs> I had to eat them. That's where the cannibalism comes in, baby! Does that follow? Not logically, no. Why? You ask the princess, your voice trembling. Why would you eat the people that you love? It seems a poor way to uh, it seems a poor way to repay them for their kindness. Well, why wouldn't you eat the people that you love? I don't think there could be any greater way of showing showcasing one's gratitude, unless you have any better ideas. You weren't expecting the princess to turn the tables on you quite like this, and dumbfounded you stare at her. You know how precious you know how precious little about love yourself. You know precious little about love yourself. So it is hard for you to form a convincing rebuttal, but you must stir up a few token arguments. You tell the princess that eating people isn't very nice. <laughs> And neither is it strictly illegal. Uh, strictly legal. Well, it's legal with consent in some states, I think. A better way to show your gratitude to your servants would be with increased wages or increased holidays. The princess listens to your arguments, her expression astute, like a student poised to take notes in a very important lecture. Once you are finished, however, her concentration fails her. Her shoulders begin to shake, but it is not with remorse for what she has done. Instead, she is laughing. <laughs> oh dear one, that's very funny, but why should I care about the law? 
I'm a princess. One day I'll be the queen. I am the law. That is a good point. But would eating people not turn her subjects against her? What subjects? I'm no fool, you know. No matter how I might act, I know what happens beyond the castle's walls. I know about the plague. Once I might have had a, pop a populace to govern, but they're all gone now. I'm a princess in nothing but name only. A monarch without any subjects. Don't you think that's sad? I know I do. It's so woefully lonely. If she feels lonely, then why has she been sim uh, systematically... Yeah, systematically slaughtering all of her domestics. It doesn't make a lick of sense. Perhaps not to you. Gently, the princess caresses your cheek. But I shouldn't judge you too harshly. As much as I like you, dear one, you are a commoner. Perhaps you can't understand the intricacies of my thoughts. Privately, you doubt anybody would be able to understand the intricacies of the, the princess's thought process, largely because it is unreasonable. You do not say that, though. Instead, you ask her only the only question you can think of, think to ask, with your weary throat, which is sore from shouting. Why? Why, you ask? The princess blinks. It's because I don't want you to leave me, of course. Everybody leaves sooner or later, whether they have pledged their allegiance to me or not. That is simply the way of the world. People are fickle and inconsistent, even to me, a monarch. That is why I decided to eat my servants. I have no choice, you see. It was the only way to ensure that they would never leave me. When you think about it, they should be grateful that I would de uh, demean myself so uh, to consume their flesh and blood. Ooh, she's not wrong. She's not wrong. She really isn't wrong. Also, just give me one tiny second. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I am a mag 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 magnanimous. Oh, okay. I am a magnan. I am a magnanimous ruler, you see, and I treat all of my subjects equally. I love every single one of you, and naturally, I love you too. You have been awfully nice to me, and you are very pretty alongside it. She, she, she's getting wrong. I mean, she's she's right on some aspects, but it's all about morality at the end of the day, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? And if you don't have that part of morality, I guess she's right. I'm not saying I don't. I'm just saying she doesn't, you know? I mean, pff, I'm, anyway, um... <laughs> If you were a plain ugly girl, perhaps I would not shower you with- Okay, never mind, she's not right. <laughs> perhaps I would not shower you with affection quite as intense as this. But you've captured my heart. I think you're lovely. So, I'll bestow upon you the highest honor I can conceive of. I want your body to mix with mine. Then we can stay together forever and ever. The princess leans in. You can feel her soft, silken hair brushing against your cheeks. You can feel, too, the warmth of her breath as it ghosts against your skin. It is cold in the dungeon, but the princess's close proximity is perverse, though this might sound. Something of a comfort. Her eyes are wide and her lips are so red. Her smile, meanwhile, is so, so sweet. I've been doing my best to fulfill the role of that fate has dictated for me, but really, the princess exhales. Her eyes, which are boring into yours, are like two dark tarns. Finally, you think you can see, in the alarming lack of light, the lack of anything, in the princess's gaze, some, some degree of humanity. It gets so lonely here. But this brief flicker of understanding which passes between the pair of you is soon cut short. The princess dips her head. She parts her lips, which are red as the petals of the carnivorous flower. 
of a carnivorous flower. You feel the princess breath, princess's breath against your neck. It is warm in the icy chill of the dungeons, and you shudder from it. For a few moments, you think that this overture of the princesses could be romantic in a way, but this too comes with a swift, merciless close. Could be us, but you're too busy playing. <laughs> the princess's mouth is on your neck. The princess's teeth, sharp as needles, are in your flesh. The princess is draining your blood. She is supping on it in great greedy gobbets, like a hungry animal, one who cannot truly comprehend the harm it is causing. Even as the princess sups from you, her arms twined around your waist, you find you cannot hate her. That's so intimate. <laughs> she is far too unworldly. You are sure as your consciousness begins to fade, that the princess was being sincere when she spoke of her love for her past servants. This is simply the way the princess expresses this great love of hers, a love which is so very abundant it borders upon mon the monstrous. Okay, ask getting flustered. <laughs> Bro, have you seen this? Are you looking at what I'm looking at? Because... <sighs> It is a love you never thought that you would ever experience. Oh boy. I love to experience this kind of love. This love of the princesses eclipses anything you have ever known before. It eclipses sanity. It eclipses reason. It eclipses all notions you might once have had of right or wrong. The princess, as you know full well, does not care about such concepts. You have always possessed a stubborn core nestled beneath your weak-willed exterior, but the princess is even stubborner than you are. Is that a word? In the face of her love, you must- you have met your match. Wow. It's fate all along! It's all been fate! It has always come to this. The princess draws back desperately. You gasp for air. But she does not give you any quarter. As before, she dips her head, her red lips redder still with your blood, then splits apart her jaw. Her teeth, which are impossibly inhumanely sharp, glint wickedly like knives. Then she tears out your throat. The front of your nightgown was white once. Now it is red. There is so much blood, you can smell it when you inhale, sharper than metal. It is so potent, you can taste it on your tongue. You try to inhale, but the task proves to be beyond you. What with the twin perforations that had raptured your skin. Your attempts breath, uh, your attempted breath with there's so many words. Your attempted breaths, when they escape your lips, sound like sand. Sorry, wheezes. Sad, sorry, wheezes. Your whole body, meanwhile, feels as though it is on fire. You make for quite the sorry sight indeed. But you'll forgive me if my sympathy is limited. You did bring this upon yourself, you know. You reap what you sow, and in your case... You made a series of bad decisions which led to your in untimely demise. Now what do you want to do? Will you accept this fate of yours and rest in peace? Or will you try to fight it? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, the image is so pretty. Full God, it only has like one thing of the full image, but I so gorgeous. Alright. I don't know which one to do right now. You know what? We're gonna accept our fate and then fight against it after, okay? Just to see if there's anything that different happens. 
What? Really? You're fine with being eaten alive in the dark, dingy dungeon than being left to rot. That does not sound like a very satisfying ending to this particular narrative. But if that is what you want, then so be it. Oh. Hang on a second. I think I know how this is going to end. I do not mind indulging you. That is what I've always done, after all, from the moment we first met. I have just... I have dedicated myself tirelessly to answering your wishes, and this is no, no different. Do not be so foolish to think, though, that you can escape me, even if your life's blood has mingled with that of the princesses. I am not going to relinquish my hold upon you that easily. I did pledge, after all, to remain by your side, come what you will, fire or flood. I will never leave you. You will never be lonely again. The end of that route? Oh my god. I- okay. Hee <laughs> hee. Let's go back. Let's go back. And let's fight. <laughs> let's fight. If this loops to the beginning, that would make sense. Because then that means we're running from her. And it'll just keep going and going and going and going and going. But if there is like some sort of secret ending to this, I mean, I guess we'll find out. That is a good answer. I must admit, I like it. It is impressive how very de uh, defiant you can be, even in a situation as discomforting as this. Now, now, try not to cry. Keep your chin out. Up. But this is but a minor setback in your story. Like all fair maidens, you are deserving of your own happy ending. Aw. You need only the strength to try and seek it out. Why don't we give this another go? Just try not to ensnare the hearts of any more monarchs, particularly those with unusual appetites. You are just destined for far higher purposes than being an entree, and there are vastly more enjoyable ways to be eaten in this world. <laughs> yeah, there are. Your fate is once again in your hands. Now I wonder, which path will you take? Oh, okay. We do have a new plot point. All right. But uh, before that, I have to, um, I'm gonna be frozen for a uh, really couple seconds. Be, uh, I'll just, you know, uh, I'll just make a happy face, okay. Sorry, I just have to reply to a text that's on my phone. <laughs> Sorry for the immersion, the, 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 that. <laughs> I just have to write out my order. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh, John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just have to, uh, I have to, uh, give my order. Um, yes. Now let's, um, Let's give up. I love giving up. By the way, have I mentioned how much I love giving up? It's so freeing. It's just the best thing ever. Honestly, it is a great feeling, but also it might not be so good in the long run. But it is- it's pretty great. It's pretty great. Anyway, should we run a 30 okay, no. See, there's an ad starting in five minutes, but I don't want that to- Okay, I'm gonna run an ad real quick right now. I should've done that while I was doing that. Okay, well, I'll just do that now. Um, so that we don't have to miss- <laughs> I don't want to give up. I'll keep trying no matter what. <laughs> Too bad. We're all gonna suffer. 
I just realized I probably could have just postponed the ad. Like, snooze. Snoozed it. Um. Oops. Oops, I guess. Oops. Oopsies. <laughs> Oops, I guess. But yes. We are now going to give up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh god. Okay. So, you've come back here, have you? That does not come as much of a surprise. Though presented with three potential paths, it is not as though traversing any of them would have any particular impact upon your ultimate fate. In the end, you are always destined to return here. Did you really think you had a choice? How hopelessly naive of you. Are we gonna learn about what we're actually running from? I thought you were smarter than that. Your breath, which once escaped your lips in sharp, ragged gasps, is now on the verge of petering out altogether. Your lungs feel deflated as though they have been punctured. Your blood is rushing through your temples in a heady, overwhelming surge. Your stomach, meanwhile, has twisted itself up into knots. Your body feels heavy, your legs in particular. They no longer wish to obey you. You take a stumbling step forwards and your foot gets caught in a tree root. Oh. You are certain that you passed this route once already and that you sidestepped it, but perhaps your memory is beginning to fail you just like the rest of your body. Oh. You gasp in surprise and pinch forwards. Dull and senseless like a sack of full potato sack full of potatoes. Your arm hits the ground with a crack, one which makes you cry out in pain. Tears begin to beat into your eyes and your on your eyes, wet and salty, tears which you cannot stime. Stimmy? 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 You are not as resilient as a gravedigger, nor as carefree as a princess. If you lived underwater like the mermaid, then nobody at the end at the very least would be able to tell that you were crying. But you do not, and I can. Believe me, I can. Your arm aches dreadfully, but at least you can still feel it. Your poor feet, meanwhile, have gone quite numb. You would try to stand had you the energy, but you know, as you sit there dazed in this, that this would be a futile effort. You cannot stand, not any longer. It hurts too much. You really have been through a lot tonight, haven't you? Hydrate and stress? All right, I'll stress before we, before we know what actually happens, hmm? <sighs> oh my god. Let's see. Maybe we're running away from, from? I'll see. Okay, okay now. I thought you were gonna say the gays, but then you went with the D's nuts and okay. Both of them not great. <laughs> not great. You could do better. Or not. You really have been through a lot tonight, haven't you? <laughs> I fear I have not been very kind to you. But you ought to be accustomed to hardship. Why then are you crying? And it doesn't get any easier. You have always been a crybaby. That is why they teased you so much. It is because they knew they would be guaranteed a reaction. You are very predictable. Even now, after you tried to borrow my power for your own purposes, you have not changed at all. As you sit there sobbing, you hear, or you think you can hear, Footsteps approaching you. I was gonna say your mom, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, I think you were right to not say your mom. <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, those don't work on me. I'm immune. <laughs> All right. Footsteps. We have footsteps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, to your right, is the snapping of a twig, to your left the telltale rustles of leaves. 
Your every senses feels ra- your every sense feels razor sharp, honed to a nice point by anxiety. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god. You are so panicked. You feel as though you are going to be sick. If you want to vomit, then why not? There's no shame in it. There's nobody here to judge you. Nobody but me. I have always been here, you know. I will always be here, no matter how fast you try to run, or how far. The streets are after your girl. <laughs> Did you really think you could escape me? Poor, sweet child. Poor little fool. I did tell you, did I not? A contract with a witch is binding. No amount of physical distance between the both of us could ever sever it. I told you I'd never let you be lonely, and I meant it. But I have rather, but I have had rather enough of these little games. It is time for me to collect my collateral. I just got chills. Holy shit. Oh my god, I love her. A soft gasp escapes your throat as you feel arms wind their way about your back. <laughs> she is... Oh my god. Naturally, you know whose arms they are. They are mine. I have been watching you all night. But this is the first time I have reached out to you in such so direct a manner. Did you not expect me to be so forward? I can hear your heart fluttering in your chest. It is beating very quickly like the start like a startled rabbit's. Your breaths are short and short short and sharp. Short. It is a cold night, and though I am holding you, you are still shaking. I wish you would not tremble so. Everybody fears the unknown, but we are not strangers. We have spoken before, have you not? When you first called me forth from the ether using that book you found in the library. You were desperate enough then to turn to the occult for help. You pleaded with me to use my magic for your behalf. You begged me. You implored and you entre and entreated and you wielded what? And you wheedled and you whined, and though I have some reservations, you forced my hand. Yeah, for real. Hi, Lord. Hi. Hi. Oh my God. We are home. This is like the end end. Don't even, this is like the end end, but is it the end? But is it the end? Is it the end now? I don't know. And then maybe. The end of the end, the end of the end. The sound lords work? Yeah, I know, I got them to work, finally. <laughs> I was, um, to, to be real, what happened was I just didn't actually um set them up properly. So that's a classic Aries move, so <laughs> yeah. No secret end end? This is the secret end end, is it not? I don't know. Anyway. Skill issue. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up now. <laughs> I had no choice, not in the face of your desperation. Don't <laughs> I don't know. You did not want to be lonely anymore. You wanted to have a friend. Somebody who would always be there for you no matter what. You wanted somebody to love you. <laughs> Did great now, it works. I'm proud of you, Aries. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I did figure it out, and it was very easy to figure out. I'm always so scared to try to figure tech stuff out because it's always like, ugh. You know, it could be a whole lot more than what I expected, but sometimes it's not, which is great. Anyway, back to the game. Is that not what you demanded of me? Is that not what I have given you? You might think me wicked, but I think you are being awfully cruel to yourself to run from me after I made all of your wishes come true. 
I did think, you know, about punishing you for running away from me. <laughs> I want to be opposed. I thought of poking out your eyes so that you might never see anybody other than me. Oh, goddamn. That's not what I expected, but okay. I thought of cutting off your long, lovely hair so that nobody might ever think you beautiful but me. Wait, hang on now. Is the only way to be beautiful is if you, um, have long hair? I thought of breaking your leg so that you might never be able to escape from me. I turned all of these intriguing ideas over in my mind, but I am a merciful witch. Witch. Raising a glass to the gays and the bys and the trans and the girls <laughs> and the big pop man! Exactly! Big mount bald men are beautiful too. <laughs> Though you hurt me, I did not wish to hurt you. You asked, after all, that I loved you, I love you, and this is what I did. <laughs> I have drowned you in my love. I have buried you beneath my love. Oh, I have swallowed you with my love. Holy shit, that's poetic. You have always been a sad, lonely girl, one who has been starved of affection. Nobody has ever cared for you. Your war? Yeah, we just went the war route. Oh my, it was quite something. Your life has been a barren, empty wasteland, one devoid of any fonder feelings. That is why I had to drown you, you see. That is why I had to bury you. And that is why I had to swallow you. In the end, I was doing you a favor. I was doing it all for you. In that sense, you are very lucky. Do you know that? There are few people in the world who have had the privilege of being loved to the brink of insanity quite this many times in one night. There are few people in the world who can claim that have... To can, can, who can claim to have been loved by a witch. You have experienced so much love it ought to have slaked even your unquenchable thirst. You know now what it feels like to be adored. I have more than upheld my end of the bargain. Now, I think it is time that you do the same. From this night forth, you and I will always be together. Then, I shall be able to love you endlessly. You will never be lonely again. <sighs> <laughs> we did it I mean we got bad endings the whole way through but like holy were they end I mean they were good endings for me but like it depends. it depends it depends how much you um how much you care about your life essentially which one is the best death I mean, the witch one, you're still alive. True, I guess you're still alive, but maybe not. I mean, you don't know what other games she can play. <laughs> uh, which was the best death? I think, honestly, I love the war, but it didn't really get very far. But that was, that was quite nice. That was quite nice if you ask me. Maybe she'll turn you a frog every now and then? Probably, probably. Just for fun, just for a little fun, just because she loves you so much. So, um, <clears throat> well, now we know, folks, this is what love does to you. This is why we should all be <laughs> aromantic. <laughs> hey, five months. <laughs> yes, this is why I'm aromantic, and I just like to play these out in fantasies and in games. <laughs> I want love. Oh, no, it's okay. You don't have to. Look, this is what happens when you want love. You make a contract with a witch, and then you'll be loved forever. But to your own detriment. God, this is- oh my- <laughs> That's amazing. Everyone should love you though, you're such a cool- great amazing talented person. <laughs> Thank you! I think so too. But not in a romantic sense. Twitch is updated in terms of feeling, but if you didn't- shut the fuck up, Twitch. I mean, uh -huh, I love you, Twitch. <laughs> You're not ready to get love, Void Eric? I'm ready to get 
No, yeah, I mean, Vord, yes. Love, hmm. In a romantic sense? I think, okay, but the the way that... <laughs> that was not romantic. That Vord track was not romantic. That was something else. And that was way more intimate than any romantic relationship could ever get. Let's be real. Let's be real. I like that kind of love. <laughs> Speaking of which, I love this game, and so I made a thumbnail, and I just want to share it because I spent- <laughs> I worked on it a little bit too much than I should have. Can I just show you? <laughs> Don't you want the princess route? Only the palace, not dungeon part. No, you see, there's always a catch. There's always a catch. <laughs> Alright. Hold on, I just want to show you this. Uh, maybe I can- oh, no, I love this. I'm gonna keep that there forever. Add a new image capture. <gasps> Where is it? Here it is! I'm so dumb. <laughs> I don't- like, I spent way more time on this than I should have. <laughs> Look at this stupid- There. <laughs> like I, I, I did. Ugh. Why did I do this to myself? I don't know, but it turned out pretty great. It looks so good. <laughs> Thank you. I really love um, like drawing in other people's styles. I think it's so fun. I think it's so fun, and more people should do it. And it's not, it's not fucking tracing or anything. Like I'm doing it for the thumbnail. I'm not gonna claim it as my own art and my own style, but it's very. It's very fun. It's very fun. Hehe. <laughs> I don't know where- I don't know why I'm putting it everywhere. But yeah, Lauren, you really should have seen the princess. She was so fucking cute. <laughs> I was suffocating. It was so cute. And, uh, oh my god. And then the floor happened, and it was even better! <laughs> it's amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah, definitely check it out. It's free, so go ahead. I know you you just got spoiled the ending, but you can still go check out the roots. It's amazing. Sorry. Um, yes. Definitely go check it out for yourself. Um Don't know the context of the site. True. Also, I kind of love watching or playing games or like seeing content like backwards i think it's fun <laughs> that way too you know what happens now what i know i got spoiled i know what happens now you watched the whole thing did you were you here for like every single playthrough of this kind of crazy cat like kind of <laughs> kind of simp behavior if you ask me <laughs> a little bit of a simp <laughs> not opposed to it i love being a simp simping is great wasn't for one, that's for sure. The mermaid one? Or the gravedigger one? They're both great. They're all great. Oh man. It was a very decently sized game as well. And it, it was it's essentially it's just a story, but with fun little aspects to it. The grave one. Yeah, the grave one. That one was interesting. i that one wasn't really romantic. That was more platonic, if anything. I really like that one. I just wouldn't know anything about me, so... Oh, you know, yeah, right. <laughs> just a supportive friend. Okay. Wow, I can't believe I just got friends on. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think. I'm really hungry. <laughs> Are you even a friend? No, I don't have friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any friends. I, I'm so lonely all the time. <laughs> That's why I play this game. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You're my friends. Oh. Dude, I'm kidding. <laughs> I have friends. No, don't die. No, Lauren, don't die. No. <laughs> I'll munch on your corpse then.
there. So you have friends, but they're not us, huh? You are my friends. Don't be like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh my god. I can't believe you just misconstrue my words like that. <laughs> it was joke. Oh god, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? <clears throat> anyway, I'm gonna go now. Bye, friends. <laughs> Bye, friends. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I think for today we're just gonna end. I'm. I don't know. <laughs> I think. I think that's okay. <clears throat> Emotional damage. Yeah. Yeah, for real. Oh, for real <gasps> why am i so sweaty now eat lots drink lots and be gay hell yeah that's my motto well you just i mean that's my now my mo i'm stealing it from you that's my motto that's what i always say <laughs> i love stealing from cat it's my favorite hobby <laughs> okay anyway <laughs> Wow, okay, but what do I do now? I finished this no- okay. We're gonna have to have a different visual novel now, every week. I am planning on doing a more set stream schedule kind of thing once I- Once I get into the swing of things. Sonic? Okay, now. Um, but yes, that is that. And I will go now. Goodbye, thanks for watching, and definitely go check out the rest of this game because it's so fucking beautiful in every, every way, shape, and form. I don't know what words are, but okay, bye! <laughs>